So, the sun has set on Domain, but has risen for September. The ageing eagles fly to Adelaide. Well, they've got plenty of critics West Coast this season. Anything is possible. Party! The big man has done it! The hometown heroes are star-studded. A remarkable comeback from Port Adelaide! After a rocky year, it's not about what we have seen, but what we're about to. Here we go, Adelaide Oval, both teams on the ground ready to go. And uh, boys, before we do, we're just talking in the break. I mean, this back line of the Port Adelaide, ha uh, Hartlett we know, Howard, Byrne Jones, Houston, Cleary, Pittard. They didn't bring in Jack Trengove. They've got some injuries. Um, it is uh, got a big question mark on isn't it? We have a look here, Cleary, 40 games, Howard, 9, Bonner, 3 games. Like, you're talking about three really good, strong forwards, key forwards. It's a lot of pressure on these kids. So there's no pressure in the midfield, Louis. These boys are going to get hung out to yeah, It can go two ways. Guys who are inexperienced and never played in a final before, they could be quite relaxed. Or guys could go the completely the other way, really get shell-shocked mm. and go into their shells. But all they need to do is, as they say, play their role. And it is a big role tonight on their key forwards. Mm. There's a vote of confidence in it, though, Louis. And that is, Trengo's a 150-game player. Mm. He got dropped two or three weekends ago. And they still haven't brought, in, brought him in. So they have shown to have a lot of confidence mm. in these youngsters. They've, they've always got the option of bringing in Trango, but they've gone, no, nope, the kids are what we want. Yeah, does that, does that tell you they're gone from path four, do you think? Trango yeah. not coming back in, maybe that's a sign that he's on the way out and these kids, are, you've got to get games into them. It's not old. All right, guys, so we're just getting ready for the anthem now. Let's cross to the Adelaide Oval for official proceedings. Ladies and gentlemen, the Australian Football League and Premier Partner Toyota welcome you to the first elimination final. Would you please now join the coaches, players and umpires as we stand for the Australian National Anthem. in the city of churches here in South Australia. The two coaches shake hands. Perfect conditions as Travis Boak makes his way into the centre. Adelaide Crows have gone through to the prelim final here on Thursday night. You have a bounce? Guest is just coming out now, mate. So... Anyway, just hang up. That's things. All right, mate. Radio Shannon, your call. Normal coin. Tails. Tails are cool. Tails it is. What up, mate? Shannon Hearn wins the toss. The captain of the West Coast Eagles. They'll kick to the right of your screen. And Port Adelaide Richo has had an outstanding year. But to go out with a home final loss would be a really disappointing way for them. And they start as favourites they deserve to. But I think all of us think the West Coast Eagles are a genuine chance tonight. Yeah, they are because of their history at this ground. They've played here six times and they've won five of them. That is unbelievable here at the Adelaide Oval. It's such a cauldron hard to win here in Port Adelaide. Extremely hard to beat here. But the Eagles just seem to have the wood over them. That does mean something. And that'll be in the heads of these guys, no doubt. Travis Boak there with a final word. You love the tension of a final. All on the line here. Elimination final and final instructions from both captains. Big crowd in attendance here. As we said, about 20 degrees in Adelaide today. And you couldn't ask for better conditions. It's beautiful over. And this has been a great tradition for Port Adelaide. And 
I've seen the great in excess song with a bit of gusto here. opponent for the winner. Ryder slaps the ball full towards the 50. Well taken by Need. Wingard. Polek. This would be a dream start. He keeps it low. Didn't have enough on it. Gap. Getting back. Takes the mark. It's deafening this roar. McGovern chips the ball quickly. Chewy. Prittis. Maybe for the final time at AFL level. Not a great kick. And Wines marks. Going to send it back with interest here. Ollie Wines. Or maybe not. Or done the crack. Yeah, well done, Mark Lecrae, but that's what Port Adelaide do so well here at the Adelaide Oval. They intercept in their forward half of the ground and they lock it in there. Just a nice smother there from Lecrae. So Paddy Ryder, the All-Australian Ruckman, 2017, up against Vardy. Big athletic Ruckman. Vardy comes in in pretty good form. Hearn tried to squeeze the handball to Shuey. Gathered and then drove it forward on his left. Very Petrie, 331st game. Big contested mark. In front of young Dougal Howard. Made a great addition to this side. Drew Petrie and Kennedy on the lead. Nice start for the West Coast Eagles. And that's what they have to do. They have to expose young defenders. Drew Petrie, great contested mark. Just looked too strong. And Kennedy had grass, had space. You can see Kennedy ducking out the back. There was no one else around. And look, that's easy for him. That is a textbook move for a full forward of his calibre. Great start here for the Eagles. All Australian full forward again this year, Josh Kennedy. That traditional little stutter step. He starts it out wide and and marked on the line by Darling. So right on the, line. the two it. big forwards get involved early for the West Coast Eagles. Right and this right is a good there. sign. Right All three of them. Darling, Petrie, Kennedy. Had a mark each already. Danger. Danger yeah. sign for Port Adelaide. He's the real X factor in this game for me, Jack Darling. Shaping up for the left foot snap, bends it round, and he kicks the first goal here at the Adelaide Oval. Ideal start, Jack Darling involved. Beautiful build up for the West Coast Eagles, and that means something in a final to show to strike first, especially as you said with the big forwards all involved. Yeah, Dust Port Adelaide, great defence all year. That's what they've built their game on, but for most of that time, Homps and Jonas were back there. They're not out there tonight. A young defence. And they had to stamp their authority early, the tall forwards, and they have. The coaches don't like that. Look at that. He should never have marked that ball, darling. It was three on one. He did. Goal. Good start. Great way to start. Game 150 and a perfect start for the West Coast Eagles. So much talk about their big forwards oh, holding the key. Oh, Petrie, Darling and Kennedy. And Wild. all involved there. Shuey quickly to Mitchell. Long again inside 50. West off game with a big fist. Pittard down over the footy. Cripps ducking. Got the handball out. Now Polek. West off working hard. And the short one if need is OK. Stay out. Stay behind. So ball to go here. Very, very loud at the Adelaide Oval. West of again comes with the flies in everything at the moment. Cripps got it to Redden. Inside 50. Petrie up in front. Couldn't mark. Chance now for Lacroix. Was he taken high? Yes. Oh, 
clear for a kick there to Mark Lacroix, but Petrie again, he nearly marked the ball. He didn't. It came to a dangerous spot for Lacroix, but he had a one on one, Petrie. So they've got their forwards isolated early. And I think Westhoff is the man that's going to have to get back there and just be loose and Move it on. come third man in and help out. 11th final tonight for Mark Lepra. Four goals in both games against Port Adelaide this season. Listen to that noise. But Lepra not equal to the task. The noise got the better of him. A behind. Pass the crowd were looking up at the scoreboard on the countdown clock there, saying that the 30 seconds had gone, but Lecra had just started to step forward just as the clock ticked over. He looked a bit uncertain about the whole thing, though. So does in his rider. Clever little knock on, looking for Wingard. Ollie Wines squeezed the handle back towards Wingard. Hard to fathom that, is it? So experienced, spent so much time inside 50. Hard to work out how that would have gone awry. Well, the only thing you can maybe make of that, Basil, is the noise here is unique, and only a handful of West Coast fans. It's an electric atmosphere that the power supporters are creating at the moment. Here is Shuey, picked up by Prittis, winning the 50-50 balls early. Ah, the Eagles, Gaff drives them forward again. Darling trying to get a run at it. Did well to bring it to ground. Pittard tackled well by Hutchings. Oh, pirouetting out was Darling to Mitchell. His 25th final. Back to Jack Darling. Can he kick the first two goals in the final? He can, Jack Darling. Well, he was the one. We just saw... If he turns one on tonight, Jack Darling, they might cause a big upset here. And you know what Josh Kennedy's going to give you, but when he's on song, he's a very hard player to stop, man. He is a great barometer, I reckon, Dash. You're right. And they're on fire here early. The Eagles, a perfect start in an interstate final. They love this ground. Home ground for them. Five and one they are here. Well, Richo, what a start this is by the West Coast Eagles and Jack Darling in particular. Well, it's just second efforts. He was in the marking contest. He gets it at ground level. He stays involved, stays at the ball, keeps following the ball. Play on. Two goals. 41 Only... goals now for the season. Umpires tonight, Donlan, Boy, and Schmidt and Mitchell. The midfield of West Coast right on top and they're powerful. Getting plenty of looks at it, Westhoff. Triple team that time with Jack. Well, he's back there at the centre bounces. That's a spare. He needs to be at the moment. They're under siege early. Pittard, not quite sure where to go. Westhoff, terrific run. Boak, Houston had a problem. Coming through was Yo. It's coming back the other way. Quickly the ball into the hands of Jetta. Long and flat and a free kick to Kennedy. Causing them all sorts of bother at the moment. Well, it was a big talking point coming into the game. And that's a chop over the shoulder there to Kennedy. Already had one shot. I reckon he'll get this one. He's a pretty reliable kick normally. This is a perfect start. At that last uh, centre bounce, two goals to nil. Only five four players have touched the ball. Never had a big finals bag. 30 bags of five or more goals in his career. Never in a final. It is a dream start now for the West Coast Eagles. They've kicked 3-1 to no score. For the Eagles fans who have travelled, I saw a few of them today in town. Buses were coming in from the airport. There's a few of them here, not a lot. They're pretty happy at the moment. Four to one in the clearances. Had first use of the footy. Kennedy's loving it. I love this ground, the West Coast Eagles. That's their recent record here. All wins over Port Adelaide at the Adelaide Oval. We know that uh, Tom Jonas suspended. Hobbs gone for the year. They didn't select Jackson Trengove. Went with a young, inexperienced back line. And maybe they're under a bit of pressure early here, Richo. Can they get it going forward? Impey, the only inclusion tonight. Well played, Jarman Impey. Switching kick. Dixon trying to get involved. Gaff came the other way, picked up by Pollock. Now, Impey, first 4A inside, 50 on the carriage of McGovern. Was outstanding, Port player down. In came Elliot Yo. And about his right. Well, Ken Hinckley knew how important it was to win that centre bounce. Robbie Gray went into that centre bounce. 
and won the ball for them. That's what he can do. He's been forward most of the year, but he can go in there and win a crucial clearance, and he did. Now they've got a chance to finally get a look at the ball in there, forward half and set up. Ryder and Petrie. Petrie did pretty well. He got it down to McGovern, and then they find the line. Thanks, Drew. Paddy again. Thank you. Sam Powell Pepper, an outstanding taboo season. Drafted really from under the West Coast Eagles' nose as he was playing at East Perth last year. The alignment club for the West Coast Eagles in the WAFL. They opted not to take him. Down in front again, McGovern. Ryder followed up, no whistle, and it'll come up again. Well, just a little stunned here, Port Adelaide. Well, this is the first time they've been able to have a deep breath, Port Adelaide, and get a bit of structure. Petrie athletically over the top right. That scrolls reversed almost. Now chance for the power. Pe Pepper lurking dangerously. Well done, Mitchell. Got it back to Elliot. Yo, high ball. Marking contest. Hearn got the first hand on it. Hutchings well tackled by Impey. Crowd wanted holding the footy. Picked up. And flying shot at goal. It's been Jones who pushed forward. Chad, and off line. Mark here. taken by Shepard. In the back pocket. There's his view, down the ground, sends it long. Petrie again in everything at the moment, drifting in from the side. Barris, Shuey, has been busy. Yo, found a way through. All-Australian defender, then he kicked the ball into the back of Houston. Socket quickly forward, off the deck. Howard got it up, played it well. And now the ball pumped back into attack. Hutchings underneath the footy, Pal Pepper came. Petrie down the line and then off a boot and over the line for a throw-in. Drew Petrie, most experienced player out there, 330 games, three more than Sam Mitchell. It's been good for the Eagles. Played a role for them this year. It's played particularly well on the ruck, Drew Petrie. It's yeah. been a really good inclusion for them. They've had downfield. Yeah, free kick downfield, so another opportunity here for the West Coast Eagles. He, when he gets his back up, Kennedy, he goes on with it. It's the type of 40 years. If he starts well, he normally goes on, has a big night. So this is a real, real concern for Hinkley. So Westhoff is the loose back at the moment, Richo, as you call. They have to think their way through this. Mitchell, patient build-up to Duggan, who has found a more permanent spot at halfback in recent times to Gaff. Now they decide to pull the trigger long. And good contest there. Darling started this game in fine style. Here's Kennedy up and running. Cripps going to bend this one round to the goal square. And that is the loose man. who played it pretty well west off. And can they launch an attack from here via Pollock? Gave it away quickly to Pollock. Wing guarded of the game on defensive fifth. Now he's got a runner breaking for him. Oh, they're out for the ball to sit. Pal Pepper got it nicely from Marshall. Sends it inside 50. Charlie's got it. Was great transition footy, and it started with the loose man Westoff. But what I like about Westoff, when he wins the footy back, he takes off straight away. He didn't just want to slope down and have a deep breath. He went straight away, and it created this uh, movement from one end to the other. One of 11 Port Adelaide players in his first final, and bangs through their opening score of the night. They're on the board, the power. So some slingshot footy to get them going. Now, a little stunned in the first five minutes of this game, but I'm sure that will spark them into action now, Richo. And that was from the defensive goal square nearly all the way down to the other end without the, the uh, Eagles touching it. Fantastic play, and that might settle them down a bit now. So Charlie Dixon kicks his 48th goal of the year. He's a man mountain. And the Power fans will be desperate for him to have a big night tonight. Good start for him. Ryder and Vardy. Ryder over the top. Robbie Gray. First. Oh, no, he's been pinned. Pretty harsh call. Sheed the tackler. On the natural left foot, sends it forward. Darling's going to get a run at it from behind. West stop the loose Lacrae. Trapped the footy nicely. Did well. Smothered by Boat. Duggan met by Carpel. Pe Pepper and Boat. Hey, 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 the 
local supporters think. Free kick count at the moment, five zip in favour of the West Coast Eagles. So the roar's been loud already. We might get an even louder one when they finally get a free kick. Barris, Wines chopped it off. It was well done by Redden, found the ball on the ground. Barris again, and again Yo gets them moving forward. Partington kept it low, a little too low, and good mark coming out. Howard read it well, which is on. Dangerous, really dangerous. Gaff got in the road. Mitchell, brilliant. Back to Gaff for a fourth goal for the Eagles offline. Oh, that would have been huge if he kicked that gap. Mitchell's hands there were late to release Gaff. He had to kick that. He had time. He had more time than he thought. This time, Port Adelaide played. In round 23, they conceded only 20 points for the game against the Gold Coast, and West Coast have got that already. We're not even at the halfway mark of the first term, and Shannon Hearn, we know this man can kick the cover off a of footy. Play on. Kennedy signalling for it deep. Darling from the side. They look dangerous, don't they? The big forwards for West Coast. Need gets back there. Aggressive kick through the corridor, but maybe a little too much. Duggan's intercepted it. Now flooding numbers back. Short lead provided by Cripps. Decides again just to pull the trigger long. Kennedy sets himself from behind. How did well to spoil Cleary. And West off the loose. And this time they were able to save the day. So they slow things down again here. Hartlett. Cross goals. Again a dangerous kick. Looking for Byrne Jones. Now Hutchings. Did it well. Kept the footy inside, although Pittard ran onto it. So maybe not so well done from that situation by the Eagles. Pittard used need. Kick down the line. Wingard the target. It's well done at the back. Shepard uses Harris. Kicks down the line as the mark paid. Yes, it is. Cripps. Looked like there might have been a little juggle in there. Umpire said it was OK. They're getting smashed in contested possession. And that's where you probably thought Port had the edge coming into the game, so everything's working for the Eagles. Exactly what they wanted. He used Vardy, as they've done all season, has been a, a wonderful pickup for them. It's plus 13 already, and that's why it's living in their foot half. Dangerous kick, though, and Ebert, the former West Coast Eagle, drifts in and marks the ball, and quickly they're away. Robbie Gray, Polek, low one, not a perfect kick. Barris one way, Pal Pepper the other, Duggan. Gaff, hard footy in there, hard finals footy. Sheed, well done. Good sidestep. And Hutchings has got the footy next to the circles. Spots a man out wide in Yo. Burn Jones read it beautifully. Well played. This is where they're dangerous for the rebound, but this coast had their defensive set up in play. So having to concede now to Sam Gray. Because they're under siege, they had numbers back, Port Adelaide, and just had nothing for it. That's why they had to go into this tempo play. This is Riley Bonner, one of three power players who've got less than 10 games experience. This is just his fourth AFL game. That young man to Westhoff. Here's another Dougal Howard, just his 10th game. Aim on. Oh, it's a poor kick. Might be OK in the end, Power Pepper. I'm not sure it was intended for him. Can they make something of this kick forward one-on-one -on -one chance Dixon McKenzie did he have his jumper pulled plunge the call Shepard back there awkward bounce now for Barris he'll be pretty happy she has to take a breath here it's a big uh, tug of jumper there well, McKenzie I'm um, quite didn't say it West Clearly. Coast by 14 points for show. It's been a very good start by the visitors. Prittis at the bottom of that pack. He might be pinged here. He's gone. I was about to say fitting, really, because that's where he spent most of his career, at the bottom of the pack. But We have, mate. Clear it out, please, Jared. Not what he would have wanted there. Yeah, the, the initial drag under is what killed him. I mean, it, he can't get it out once it's under there, but you just, if you drag it under, it's fraught with danger. So the Eagles took Daniel Venables at 13, and Port Adelaide took Todd Marshall at 16, and Pal Pepper at 18. Both of them playing tonight. A kick from Pal Pepper. A little nervous in his first final.
Richo, you talked about that contested ball right now. It is plus 13 West Coast. Keep an eye on that for Port Adelaide because when they finish plus 10 or worse at the end of a the game, they are 0 and 6 this year. Max Oders, they won't mind a little bit of pressure being built. They fought half the ground here, Port. Can they trap Play it in? On. Partington. Play on, you. Put it out the prettiest direction. They clear defensive 50 West Coast and Shuey picked it up and he might get the back out of bounds on the fall off Howard. Nicky Shade off. Tuchel Howard Shin. Well, that during the season, they were third in clearances and contested possession averages, Port Adelaide, and they're being smashed in that area at the moment. Something that got them to fifth on the ladder, and they haven't been able to get it going so far. They need to turn that around pretty quickly. Contested possession, almost double, 32 to 17. That has been a big part of the story of the game so far tonight. Well, it'll expose the young defence. If West Coast keep getting first use, it's going to be tough. Dixon, good tackle from Sheed. Gray trying to force the ball forward. Comes back out the other way. Eamon had it momentarily. Dixon, now Prittis again, bottom of the pack. Dixon not into his back, the umpire said, and up it will come. Ball's out the back. Let's have a look at the Telstra tracker tonight. We're going to have a look at the maximum speed, and the quickest player on the ground so far is the biggest. Charlie Dixon, 32 k's an hour. That was when he was running back inside 50, I reckon, to take that mark and kick a goal. So the big man's got some wheels. He's a good power athlete, Charlie Dixon. And now McGovern signaling to get out the other side. It was Jetta. He was out that part of the ground. Right under the power. They were forced... This kick down the line. Amon in front. Shuey from behind. Amon second effort was good. They don't argue for a big Charlie. Which I said, he's quick. He's strong. And a little one-two for Ebert. He's under pressure. And McGovern, as he has done so much. Best in the comp at that dust. This is bread and butter. Intercept. Wins it back. Reads the play so well. Mitchell's kick. An interesting one. Well done in the end. To Partington. Hey, just his sixth game, Basil. Yeah, there was some talk that he might go out late, but he's held his place. Adam Simpson keeping his faith with the 22 that got them here against Adelaide. Hutchings kick looking for Darling. Amon Shuey gets him over the line. Mentioned Jeremy McGovern. Amazing stat from champion data thrown up during the week. He lost just five of 64 defensive one-on-one -on -one contests this season. A losing percentage of just 7.8% of all defensive contests. Compare that to Alex Rance, 169 who was the next best. Yeah, it's impressive stuff, isn't it, to be a great one-on-one -on -one player. And that certainly sums up McGowan. That kick over the head of the young man, Marshall, but he's going to get a free kick. And that's what he does well. Marshall, he leads up the football, and he did that then. The ball went over his head, but he drew a free kick, and that's what he has to do tonight. Hit up with the ball carrier, drag defenders out of the way so Dixon can get one-on-ones. It was Port's first pick in last year's draft. Pick six, they play on to call. Redden under pressure. This is better from the power. MP worked a little move, and then not a great kick. He had Ryder in his sights, but fell short in the Hutchings. To Mitchell, as always, finding a heap of the footy. Darling. Now it's going to go back and win it at ground level. Jack Darling kicked the first two goals of the game, shinned it forward. Fine. To try and get clear, his teammate Partington couldn't quite extricate the footy. He's had a good first season. Luke Partington, young South Australian from Tumby Bay in South Australia via Norwood. His father, Brian, died in a mining accident at Roxby Downs just a few months before he was drafted. A really special night for him tonight. His mum, Amanda, is here, brother Mitchell, his sister, Shay, and the family all spoke of Dad, Brian, watching down how proud he would be of his son, 20 years of age. As Luke mentioned, Game 6, a huge moment for him. Enormous faith shown in him by the Eagles coaching staff. There he is again. Got his hands on the footy. Knocked over Luke Shuey trying to get it back. Shuey at the bottom of this pack. Comes out the back. Well, they weren't expecting that. Prittis. Long ball. Some heavy contact. Drifting in Petrie. Darling, first man in the queue, got it eventually. Trips at Ricochet's back. Prittis again. They're lying up. 
Long ball. Four on one here for Port Adelaide. Amon goes back and answers Port Adelaide's prayer. Yeah, well done, Carl Amon. Good effort short to Hartland. The Eagles are really pressed up. Get a good look at that. Just patrolling their forward 50. Really going to make them work to try and get through. And that has forced the error to Petrie. That's a panic kick from Port Adelaide. Big turnover. The experienced Stevens coughed it up and he shakes his head in disbelief and drew Petrie within range. He read that beautifully. The players are taught to watch the eyes in that position, and Petrie would have been watching his eyes. He read it early and intercepted, and it gets the distance easy here, Drew Petrie. 10-3 from set shots this year. Big Drew leans back on it and nailed it through. What a start for West Coast. Out to a 20-point lead. Their big forwards are a big factor. Two goals to Darling. Goal to Kennedy, and a goal to Drew Petrie. It's gone to gone to a bit of script so far, Das. The concerns around town, I guess, here in Adelaide would be the young defenders. Kenny Hinckley's shown a lot of faith, but some big boys in the Eagles squad line, and they're doing the job. So there's the Eagles forward line. Look at the three tools. Petrie, Darling, Kennedy, set up in that triangle formation there. Finals, different ball game, but maybe we shouldn't be so surprised about this. Their last nine home and away games, the West Coast Eagles won the last quarter. This would be ten in a row here. Port Adelaide this time, though. Send the ball long. McKenzie with him is Marshall. Marshall did really well, but McKenzie, good tackle. And when it mattered, the veteran defender was right where he needed to be. And to come back again. Just in terms of efficiency, obviously Port Adelaide turning the ball over, going at just 51% by foot. Thanks, Soda. So, yo, switch on for the West Coast Eagles. Interesting one here. Lines within Shuey. And, well, look, some fancy footwork on the boundary line. Sam Mitchell up to nine disposals. He's on his way to 30 again in a final. It's a machine, Sam Mitchell. He's done that 13 times before. Richo, five more than any other player in finals football. He's just got an appetite in the big games. Here he is again. Boat worked him off the footy. Back to Gaff. And here are the big forwards again at the back. Darling, Kennedy in front. Hart that won it all. To Pittard. And Pitch has got his name written all over it. 331st game tight, Basil. 26th on the all time list. One behind the great Lee Matthews. And that's going about as well as anyone out there. I may have said they won their last nine last quarters. First quarters, of course, for the West Coast Eagles. So this would be 10. Dewey, Prittis, 33 seconds left on the clock. Long ball in the darling direction. Look at those hands. What a stunt he's made. Chris was breaking for him. Ignored that one. Hearn, thumping kick, but he goes sideways. Clock down at 20. Duggan with the footy. And now Jetta. 12 seconds on the clock. Long one inside 50. No West Coast Flyers. Pritis, bottom again. Impey, Cripps, just got it out in time. Burn Jones, thrown out by Wines. They kept it moving. Siren sounds. Fantastic start by the West Coast Eagles. Port Adelaide crowd, vocal. Don't like the free kick count. Don't like the score. Take nothing away from West Coast. Superb for them. Four goals, two, 26. Port Adelaide, one straight six for the Eagles by 20 points at quarter time. The next great television challenge. That is some aloe vera. Campbell! New family fun launching soon on Seven. The Super Saturday Tour of the Nation final, Sydney by 65 points, ending Essendon season, and with it, the fantastic careers of James Kelly and Joe Watson.
classy stuff from the Sydney Swans. James Kelly, a hero with Geelong and of Essendon and Joe Watson, of course, one of the famous Essendon names. So Sydney march on Geelong for them next. Port Adelaide and the West Coast Eagles in the first elimination final. Second chronologically, it's been a wonderful start by the West Coast Eagles. Four goals in the opening term, two of them for Jack Darling. Mark Soderstrom's on the boundary. Terrific start from West Coast. Absolutely, Baz. I think Port Adelaide's worst case scenario was to see the three talls up forward do a wonderful job and they've done that. All four goals have come from Darling, Kennedy and also Petrie. Plus 15 in contested possession for West Coast as well. And those three big boys, well, more than half of their possessions have been contested. And Port Adelaide, while by foot they've really struggled, Shades are perhaps one of their worst losses for the year. That was against Essendon back in round 12 when the Bombers' first 13 goals came from Port Adelaide turnovers. Already the turnovers for them have been costly to start with. Yeah, thanks, Soders. Bit to think about for Port Adelaide. They have enjoyed the break. Reset. So the second quarter underway with a perfect bounce for right, a really aggressive jump. Trying to set the tone. Lacrae though, just hacked it forward. Cripps came in, Pritis dragged off it. Pittard, Ollie Wines really crashing in. A little bit happening off the footy there. You're up two together, you grabbed each other. Grabbing each other. Good on Byron. Balls in play, balls up, balls in play. So you're grabbing each other. I'm not going to pay us off for a kick. Well done to the umpire, I like that. I'm going to throw it up, we'll get on with it. In comes Ebert. Britta stole the footy out of the hands of Ebert. Now over the back, Kennedy and Darling. They look so dangerous. Look at the athleticism of Kennedy. Got it back to Shuey. Can he kick the first goal of the second quarter? What about this start from West Coast? And it's getting stressful all of a sudden. And the Port Adelaide coaching box. That is an unbelievable start to this final. And the script is there from the first quarter. They've had five possessions, four contested. Port Adelaide haven't touched it again. So it's happening in the engine room there. Shuey, Mitchell, Prittis. They're getting their hands dirty. And the Port midfielders get, need to get moving. Oh, that's what he can do. He can get a lot of the footy midfield, but he can get forward Luke Shuey. And hurt you on the scoreboard. Eight disposals for him. Prittis and Mitchell in possibly their last games of football. Nine disposals each. Port Adelaide really need to get moving. And they do. Boak, their skipper, out of the middle quickly. Dixon plays on. It's wide. It sits OK. Impey keeps it low. Required journey, yes. Gray plays on. Not a bad one. Eamon's got it. Well, they've run it out of the middle there, Baz. You get the ball moving forward quickly. Dixon's playing in front. Now they get a chance. 15 gone. 15 gone, Carl. Resigned during the week, an extra two years on his contract. Carl Amon. Just five goals this season and doesn't add to it with that one. They really needed that. 1 1, 5 2, West Coast by 25 points. So the skipper Shannon Hearn, his fourth year as captain with the West Coast Eagles. Their number one preferred choice with the kick-ins. Kennedy's pushed up. Mitchell looking for disposal number 10. Good bite collected. A lot of young players do us. We mentioned that at the outset. 11 with no finals experience. And they look a little nervous, the Port Adelaide new brigade. Yeah, it's a young side. Always a challenge in your first final. It's a completely different game. You look at Sam Mitchell there in his 25th final. He's as relaxed and comfortable in this environment as anyone could imagine. West Coast with six players over 30 years of age. Westhoff just on screen then. The only one for Port Adelaide. Burn Jones. Free kick. Now listen to the roar. Well, this is the first time Charlie Dixon's been able to get a look at the footy in one-on-ones. And both times he's taken a mark and drawn a free kick at the start of this quarter. So they've just got to get first use and get it into him. And he can be a match winner tonight. Four goals the last two weeks of the home and away. And he's got their only two goals tonight. 48 for the season. Well, he's looked the most dangerous. And he's got the most strength, that's for sure, on the Port Adelaide forward line. 
Been around a long time, Charlie Dixon, but he is in that group of 11 Port Adelaide players with no finals experience. So the lead cut back to 19 points. Second goal for Charlie Dixon there. Uh, his best return ever, obviously, uh, since he's been from the Gold Coast. 42 dollars the Gold Coast. 48 now this year. Uh, and you can see the black armbands on Port Adelaide marking five years since the uh, passing of John McCarthy on that uh, end-of-season trip back in Las Vegas. Yeah, thanks, Otis. Most of the time that was for everyone in AFL football. And I'm sure their thoughts are with the McCarthy family again tonight as... Sam Mitchell's kick forward. Peachy could have been pushed in the back. Howard collects it. Just dumps the footy out of the defensive zone. Yo went back courageously. Ebert flicked it over his head, looking for Power Pepper. In came Redden, though. Prittis. Sharp little handball. OK to Yo. Duggan. Oh, good luck getting past Charlie Dixon. He's 200 centimetres at 105 kilos. And that's what happens. That is a brilliant tackle, the big man. He is a good tackler. Say there, don't go forward. Charlie Dixon. He does that weekly. He lays some really big, strong tackles. And that's a team lifter, Rico, yeah, it isn't is. it? It really is. Because they were out the West Coast Eagles. Duggan just needed to get past the big man. He couldn't get past him. Vardy, well done. Good follow up. Wingard. Vardy's still in there. Look at Pritis. So busy. Duggan gets another chance. Dixon coming the other way. This time the younger player had to strip him, and he did. Redden. Gathers the footy. Petrie is having a fantastic night. They're just, they're just too big and strong. Simple as that. Petrie, Kennedy. It's winding the clock back here, Drew. To McGovern to McKenzie. Right across goal. The switch well and truly executed. And now Shepard has the footy. Back to McKenzie. A little uncertain. It's a dangerous kick, and they've coughed it up to Gray. Terrible result for West Coast. Pal Pepper, outside 50. Not a great kick. Didn't have the depth, and there was no one back there. Elliot Yo just mops up. Yeah, he just blasted away there. He had players out. That was a waste, a big waste. They'd force a turnover, and they needed to get a goal from that. There's Petrie again. The contested marks are 7-1, to one, the dominating in the aerial. Battle. Critters leading possession gather on the ground. That was number 12. And now Red and work a little one-two with Gaff and just cruising down the out wing here at Adelaide Oval. Cleary in front of Kennedy. Big challenge for Tom Cleary tonight. I get the feeling at quarter time, Ken Hinkley's put it on his charges and said, We well, need some aggression. You got beaten up in contested foot in Charlie Dixon. He's got the message. And he's trying single-handedly to just get this side up and running in this final. Ryder and Petrie doing the ruck work here. Right, well done. All Australian ruckman. Here's Prittis. Another disposal. High ball. Back towards Darling. That's 8-1 now contested marks. This is where the game is at the moment. Stuff here. They're just winning the crucial one-on-ones in the air. Some teams take eight contested marks or a game these days. The Eagles have had it in a quarter and a bit. So Jack Darling, 39 goals before tonight for the home and away season. He's kicked two already. This for his third in the opening half. Jack in game 150, playing perfectly. Well, this game will really get away from Port Adelaide if they don't if their work rate in the contest. It's plus 20 now. I just talked about the contested marks. They're just simply doing the hard stuff, the Eagles, and their big forwards are then putting on the scoreboard, and it's starting to get away from Port. They need someone in the centre bounce to win a big hard ball. That's a good mark. He knew where the ball was landing. He used his strength to get... Pittard back, protected the ball. Big body, Pittard's never going to get around him. Ryder and Petrie. Drew bounced back in his lap. You need the touch play on, called out by it. Very clearly with that, Cleary. Oh, he's caught the handball up to Hutchings, to Prittis and Shuey. And 
You can't believe that that has ended up where it has. And Jamie Cripps, everything going West Coast way, but it's on the back of great contested hard play, Richo. And look at those two, the disposals. This is for the whole two teams. Not one Port Adelaide player's had more than seven. Chris has had 14, Mitchell 10. Nine contested for Prittis, five clearances. That's his Brownlow medal winning form. This man, Jamie Cripps, has kicked 25 plus goals in each of the past four seasons, and he pours on a bit more pain for West Coast. Starting to get to the point where you're concerned for Port Adelaide. Just licking their lips at the moment. 14 minutes still to play in the second term, but already alarm bells blaring for Port Adelaide. Wingard, Polek, can they get something going? Long ball down towards the 50. It was a high leap by Marshall, came through Gaff. Mitchell, Yo, who started it off, he took one on too many. That was an error. Now Need got it from Wingard, handballs out to Charlie. It's their only winner so far, and he wins again. There's three for Dixon. Three from Dixon at one end, three from Darling at the other. 25 points the lead is cut back to. And Charlie Dixon is taking a lead and lone roll in this charge for Port. He is, and he's doing his best to try and fire the troops up. He's run up, he's yelling out at the midfielders. Eight disposals, that leads for Port Adelaide. That was good pressure there from Port. They forced the turnover. Dixon finishes it off. He's had eight disposals. Four contested and kicked three goals. Slayed that huge tackle. He can't do much more. He just gave the signal. How about you get out of my space? I'm on here tonight, Charlie Dixon. Can they get it in his direction again? They're going to win the clearance. Travis Boak. But Dixon again yeah, signaling. Just Travis give me space. Get out of the way. He's got a one-on-one -on -one at the moment. Well, get McGovern away from him. So, West Coast trying to get numbers around. Look at McGovern uh, from the side. Barris. Push the back. And Dixon's come up with a free kick again. And I reckon he's within range, Charlie Dixon. He is. I saw him uh, having shots out on the ground, Darcy, and he was nailing them from this distance. He's a powerful man. He wasn't in the marking contest, just fell into his back, McKenzie. If he did well there to make sure McGovern didn't have a, a fly at it. So Charlie Dixon playing a lone hand tonight for the power. A long bomb from outside 50. And Charlie can it get the journey. I think just a fingernail on it. And I reckon Charlie's looked around and thought maybe that would have been shepherded through. He's not happy. But he lose large in this final, Charlie Dixon. Sure does. Shootout, isn't it? Darling one end. And Dixon the other, Duggan doing the kicking in. Polek, thought he might have marked it there, but not made. Hartlett, well done. Might have been legged. Probably could have got a free kick, held onto it a long time. Darling, Gaff, clever, quick kick down the line. Burn Jones camped oh. under it. So they can relaunch again here. Playing better, but Cripps got in the road. A little slip there as well. Howard, under pressure when he kicked. It's a wide ball. Polek going back with the flight. Well done. That was important. He got a touch there right on the line. Speaking of lines, this was the other one. And Vardy with a touch about a metre out from the goal line. There he is on screen. Nice Vardy. A lot of injuries in his... Early part of his career down at Geelong. Had to see him healthy and out there. Darling, fully committed to the footy. Burn Jones trapped it nicely. Ebert, slick hands to Powell Pepper. Like a good bounce here, Port. Impey came in. Little fumble from Duggan. Well done, Impey. Need. Can he find a way through the McGovern tackle? McGovern's got hold of him. My ball. So a little revival here from Port Adelaide. Certainly a better four or five minutes. Vardy up on his own, but taking an eight. Strong tackle front on him. We'll have a restart again right on the 50. 7-2 West Coast. 3-2 Port Adelaide. Four even goals. Wingard. Read it well from Vardy. West off. Gray. Quick kick inside 50. It's an awkward bouncer. 
McGovern did it well. Hung on. McKenzie. Now Yo drives the ball towards the outer side. Courage. Outlet one way. Hard ball for Hutchings. Quick kick. Burn Jones. Good mark. Cripps got it moving quickly, but Burn Jones not for the first time in the last few minutes in the road and chopping things off for Port Adelaide. He's won some good contests ball in the last few minutes, Burn Jones. Hasn't missed a game, Rich Joe, since debut. Does he, Burn Jones? A really consistent performer, Polek. Just feel like a bit of momentum shift away of the power. Can I get another one here? Need? Did he play on? Play on! Just, just got to be careful here now. McGovern's back. So Houston, can he think his way through it? You would be aiming at it, Charlie Dixon, every time. And he had a good look at it, Charlie, but a timely fist from McGovern. Put that 20 rows back, McGovern. Look at this. That's an old school, uh, just whack it back 20 rows. That's clear the fine leg boundary, Richard. Yeah, he flushed it, didn't he? Hit the boundary. He's feeling it at the moment, Charlie Dixon. Vardy did well, got in front. Mitchell, west off. Here's Charlie again, around the body. He's on fire. He's in the zone at the moment, Charlie Dixon. Back in the old days, you'd just get everyone else out of the 50 and give it to him. But unfortunately, that was about 20 years ago. <laughs> it's good fun, though. McKenzie had the height and strength advantage against Pollock and took a well time mark. Down the line, Vardy from behind Darling. Over all their heads. So I'm on cleverly over the line. Would you talk about uh, Charlie Dixon in magnificent form? He's had his best preseason ever. In fact, probably his first preseason where he hasn't had issues with his ankles. Only averaged the 13 games in five years at Gold Coast. The season this year, he hasn't missed one. He's got the body right. Westhoff take a turn in the ruck. Slap forward by Mitchell. Ricochets back into his lap. Mitchell, 25th final of his decorated career. Just wanted the footy. Blood all put Adelaide. And then a lighter moment from the champ. So most finals of all players out there. He's the oldest player out there. He's three days older than Drew Petrie. They're both 35 next month. Drew Petrie, most experienced player out there. 330 games, three more than Mitchell. Ryder. Boak. Wines in there as well. Boak comes again. Prittis. Intent on keeping it tied in. You can see uh, Marshall on McGovern there, and that, that's what he has to do. He has to keep distance away from Dixon. He has to keep McGovern away from that third man in. He's doing it well. He's got about 20 metres space there. Big role for a young man in just his... Third game of AFL football. It's a good build up. Sam Gray working hard as the man Richo spoke about. Marshall, can he occupy McGovern? He's going to be involved here and just too good, McGovern. He just played it so well. The young man was working hard. It's a hard job because McGovern's too smart. If, if Marshall goes somewhere where the ball's not going to come, McGovern just chase the ball and, and get it. So it's a fine line, a balancing act that he's playing there. Fleury, one on one with Kennedy. I won't stay in. Power Club, the West Coast Eagles. 31 years in the competition, looking through the record books. Some famous names in that time. Four Wilsons, three Matiras, two Selwoods, and this year, a Partington and a Petrie. It's like Christmas. Prittis, Wines held him up. Prittis again at the bottom of the pack. Bonner. Good tackle by Jetta. And up it'll come again just outside 50. Vardy. Probably beaten for it that time. Need. Ryder rather got the tap out down and quickly the ball moves forward. Bouncing one. It was well done by Marshall. Now getting back. Bit of a problem for Shepard. Sam Gray kept his feet and kept his cool. Kicks a goal. It's under 20 points. Oh, they're getting going now, the Port fans. The last five minutes have been good for them. They've lifted their rating around the contest. And that was a sinking feeling there. 
as a defender running back, Shepard just had to be clean. But he's also got in the back of his mind. Chaser and Jeb, I fumble it, I'm in trouble, and that's exactly what happened. So he did well to get back onto that ball. Shepard just was awkward for him. He knew that he was under the pump. Horrible feeling. And Sam Gray has got it back. So they're in the game now, Port. They get consecutive goals for the first time in this match. Robbie Gray, Wingard. So the gun's starting to get involved now. Riley Bonner. Classy left foot kick. Marshall couldn't quite collect it. Just got to try and keep the Eagles scoreless. Now maybe pinch another one themselves. Is he all right down there, Soders? Look, Shuey. Yeah, no worries at all, Rich. I just been down in the room. Just got the thumbs up from the doctor now. He's been up and down the line just uh, testing himself out, but he's fine to come back on now. Ryder tried to flick it out the back. Here comes the ball. Ollie Wines. He had a couple holding on him and still managed to drive forward. He's big, powerful frame. Party. Got really high on Ryder there. Whistle. West Coast. And the West Coast Everybody Eagles on. way. Sam Gray, Robbie Gray. Both involved in recent times. Robbie Gray still remonstrating. Sam, of course, with the last goal. Here's Jetta. And Hutchings, who's been busy. Now Gaff from the logos drives the ball towards the 50. Darling working off him. Howard. Tough one here. Hartlett, good gather. Kicks the ball around the corner. Well done by Polak. Controlled it well. Ebert got his kick away. Prittis again. Mitchell, what a combination they've been tonight. Hutchings, high ball inside 50. In front, no mark that time. Sheed. And the ball to the back of the back. And up it will come. How good are their hands in close, Prittis and Mitchell? Just release the pressure off the ball. Both of them. They've been good tonight. They've had 28 disposals no, between them. No, West Coast Adelaide. forwards consistently getting one of ones. West Coast three. Oh, oh, no. Oh, is that a rock? I asked twice, Paddy. Your job is to look around and see the rock. So, Paddy Ryder is beside himself. He's up by saying he didn't nominate. This is the new rule. And this is where it doesn't make sense to me. It's the All-Australian Ruckman. Who else is going to go up down there? Seriously. This is where it goes out of control a bit, that rule. This is a big, big call. And a final. Dom Shee gets a gift. Can he make them pay? Well, the power fans might think some poetic justice. And I'm with you, Richo. I think Paddy Wright is looking at the by saying, do you think I'm not going to go up in the well, ruck? What else is he going to do to us? The noise is so extreme here, the miscommunication, and that is a big price to pay. Well, those sheeters let them off the hook. Houston to Bonner, down to Bochy. Good gather by Pollock. That was brilliant. Need handball just didn't quite make contact, but it's OK. Need has followed up well. Hartlett, Pollock. Look at this football from Port Adelaide. Partington couldn't get to him. Long ball inside 50. It was out of bounds on the full. So let's have a listen to this. So you heard the umpire saying, Port Adelaide, who's up? Paddy Ryder standing behind. Clearly thinks he's going up, but controversial free kick. Jetta's got the wheels. Beautiful pick up from Jetta. Can he bend it around and kick a miracle goal? Just to the near side. But the matter of the law and how it is at the moment, it's right. Or did, or did he nominate? So Paddy Ryder puts yeah, his hand he up. Did. He puts thinks the umpire's clocked him. Yep, yeah. I'm here. Okay, so that's where it's stupid. So the umpire had his back to Big Paddy Ryder, obviously. Guess he just needed to be a bit more vocal. Dixon, well done. Need is having a couple of brilliant moments here. Quickly through the middle of the ground. Ball down towards Wines, but Mitchell got his fist in the road. Now Redden. Marshall worried him out of it. Wines there to assist. They tie it up on the 50. So better moments here for Port Adelaide. Crowd involved, their big names coming to the fore. Look at Wines hard at it here. He wanted a free kick. He didn't get one. Petrie and Ryer. Good on down there by Redden. A good half of his 
Jack Redden, the former Lion. Now a chance forward of 50. Wingard. Just outworked there by Barris. A good one on defender is Tom Barris as well. And a short one on to Yo. Spotted Hearn. Chance here for Port. Can they gather the footy? Picked up by A and tried to get it to Westhoff. Now eventually it does. Down the line kick. Oh, Robbie Gray. What a star. He wants to get going. Kicks into the corridor to Wingard. Brilliant play, Robbie Gray. He is a jet. Love the way he plays, Robbie Gray. Took a great mark. And he has the presence of mind. He knows his uh, man is out of action. Delivered a pinpoint pass. These two are the guys. They, if they get going... Get ten goals, four in his five finals coming in tonight. Chad Wingard. And he has drifted that across the face of goal. And really disappointing miss that for Port Adelaide. Wingard and Dixon with 11 disposals each. The leaders for Port Adelaide. McGovern not going to drop that. The contested Mark King. Wasn't going to drop the uncontested one. It was missed by Christo Pal Pepper. Now they're getting more confident. Houston, Eamon, Ebert. They move it quickly. It goes for home, Ebert, and rolls it through. They've kicked three in a row the power. Uh, it's back to game on now. Terrific second half of this second quarter by Port Adelaide. The contested footy is back to only minus 13 now, but it was up over minus 20 halfway through this quarter, so they've pegged that back, and that's what's got them in the game. It's as simple as that. You win the hard ball, your forward line gets opportunities. West Coast had the lead out as high as 31 points. We're back to within two straight kicks now. The back of that goal from Ebert. Koshy likes it. The ball fans are up and about. Yeah, the noise of the crowd's coming into it now. Robbie Gray into the middle again. Now Pepper. What a first year of football that young man has put together. Prentice not happy. Free kick was there. He was first to the ball. He'd win free kicks. Sideways ball from Robbie Gray. Does Port Adelaide ahead in the inside 50s, 21-20 for the first time tonight. Play on. Play on. And this is Cleary with it at halfback. So it was just almost a lazy sort of kick down the line, but... Front and centre, beautifully done, Pal Pepper. Sam Gray, one-on-one -on -one chance, four to the footy. Young man, Marshall, did really well. Great win. Here comes Pal Pepper, the young star for Port Adelaide. Couldn't quite. They're under siege now, 12 out of the last 15 inside 50s. This is a credit to Port. They were getting absolutely towed up halfway through this quarter, and they've turned it around, and I reckon Burn Jones started it. I reckon he was the one. He put his head over it a few times. He took a contested mark and he got him going. Him and Dixon. Repping the fight at the back. Couldn't mark half time. Now can't come quickly enough for the West Coast Eagles. Duggan, Mitchell. He missed Mitchell. Duggan got it back. Well done, Gaff. Shuey through the middle. Back to Gaff he goes. Might be a sideways ball it is. McKenzie. Now Yo, All Australian defender. Gaff. Back to Yo, going up and down the West Coast Eagles at the moment. Like a Yo Yo. And Cripps marks on the wing. So, two and a half minutes remaining, West Coast by 11 points. It's a really good kick from Cripps. He spotted Prittis in the middle of the ground. Good courage to take that one on. Prittis had a glance back at the bench. I think he was getting some instructions about how long to go in the half. Off the hands of Vardy, Gaff couldn't keep in. Let's have a look at the Telstra tracker in this second quarter. We're going to have a look at repeat speed efforts in the game so far, and that's no surprise. That's his game, Lewis Jetta. 18 sprint efforts for him. And young Marshall, 14. He's been leading up. As I said, he's a leading forward. And he's been getting on the burst and hitting up at the ball. Well done, Vardy. The crow, and now touch play on the call. Pittard has got to think his way through it. Good tackle pressure. 
applied by the Eagles. Oh, they've got him again. Pittard gets dumped. Cripps picks it up. Smothered off the boot of Prittis. Through came Boone Jones. Robbie Gray working over time. Well done again. Westhoff back there in defence, but it's going to come back via McGovern. They stood tall, Dars, in defence, didn't they? And this man chopped it off. So a minute and 35 on the clock. All the flyers were Port Adelaide. Darling at the back. Shuey in the ball over the line. They'll get another chance. They led by 31 points during this term, the West Coast Eagles. Port Adelaide, three in a row. And suddenly the Eagles lead 11 points with less than 90 seconds to play in the opening half. Ryder, almost but not quite clean possession. And the ball will come up again. 7 4 5 5. Terrific fight back in this second term for Port Adelaide. Vardy again. Picked up nicely by the skipper boat. It's going to come back again. They're well set up the West Coast. And Hearn, I think he thinks he's some sort of chance, Shannon Hearn. Might be just too far. Sides is going to put it in the Darling direction. Good fist. The young man Howard. Kennedy. Tracking the footy, picked up nicely by Jetta. Petrie tried to take on the tackle of Bonner. Oh, and Riley Bonner got him. Riley Bonner, yep. Well played. Oh, is up with yet? Thank you. Thank you, Kick. Up's here. So less than a minute now. Is there time for another goal? Can they run it? Either way, you feel the game, Richo, is delicately poised. Dixon the target. No surprise, McKenzie. Paid the mark. Might have one last chance here, the Eagles. And Hinckley urging them to get back. It's a high ball towards the 50. Less than 20 oh. seconds now. Petrie almost. Pittard at the back. Ran into some trouble. Ball not over. Yes, it is. With 10 seconds left on the clock. Yep. Got to get something really clean here. I can see a Lewis Jetta trying to run through this pace. Nathan. All that finals experience with the Sydney Swans. Ryder, superb, Cra ran into Gray. Got a handball away. Three seconds left on the clock. Is that enough? Umpires there. Pays holding the ball on the siren. Oh, what a big call that is. You dragged that in. You dragged it in. No. And you must stop it out. Oh, oh. Just here. I'm not quite there. Thank you. Yes, thank you. He's dragging, he's going to knock it out. Did he drag it in or did Shuey help out. him drag it in? Anyway, they've got to get back on the line now, get the Ruckman rider back there. It's almost a torp, isn't it? Well, I think he's got a drop punt in him. Needs his best effort here. Luke Shuey from outside 50. It's a good kick. Hasn't quite got the distance. And the score remains. What a first half. Brilliant start by the... West Coast Eagles, superb in the opening term, 4-2 to one goal, but Port Adelaide fighting back in its second term, 4-5-3-2, and as a result, it is the West Coast Eagles by 11 points, elimination final Saturday night footy, West Coast 7-4-46, Port Adelaide 5-5-35, delicately poised. The winner goes on to play GWS. So 11 points it is for the Eagles. Big, big second. Finals footy on Fox, half time. Well, a great game we've got on our hands. Off to a beautiful start, the West Coast Eagles. In fact, they could have kicked the first four goals. Lacroix missed the soda from dead in front. But they lead by 11 points, and it's going to be an interesting game of football from here. The Port Adelaide crowd getting right in amongst it now, and uh, even a free kick at the end there, just to get them seeding, Dermot. And nothing <laughs> happened because they didn't get a score against Because they need but that. But it kept them going a little bit <laughs> yeah. there, didn't it? Because they're such a friendly crowd at the best it, of times. Exactly. Hey, yeah, I thought Prittis, Mitchell and Shu were wonderful early, but if we have a look at the way they played that first 40 minutes of the game, they literally ran on ball 
unchanged. So they're going to run out of steam, those mm. boys, and they started to in the second half of that quarter. Hence that big margin they'd set at 20-something points has been halved back to 11. This is going to be closer than 11 by the end. It's mm. just how far, and if it goes over the break-even mm. mark and turns into a win the other way. Yeah, I think Port Adelaide are real settling into the game now. I think early on they, they panicked coming out of the defensive half which gave West Coast a lot of opportunities to go back mm. in and, and repeat entries. They didn't capitalise on those. Fright? Maybe a little bit stage fright. There was a lot of pressure from West Coast early on but I think they've really eased into the game now and you can see they're starting to pick them apart and really just get the ball down to Charlie Dixon. He's having a fantastic game. Look, we spoke about the, the midfield pressure from Port. If it wasn't on, these young backs were going to get shown up in that first half. They got absolutely obliterated. I mean, the first three real marks taken in the game was Darling, Kennedy and Petrie. Yep. Straight away they just dominated. Overpowered. Mm, we yeah. tipped that, no doubt about it. All right, let's go into the Oxygen Lab for first thoughts uh, tonight. David King and Nick Del Santo, boys. Yeah, thanks, Ed. Well, we felt like West Coast did what they had to do at the start of the game. Got the momentum, took the crowd out of it. But to Port's credit, they fought back really hard. And I reckon they'd be more comfortable going in 11 points down than probably what West, West Coast are going in 11 points up, Kingy. Just think that this was done in the planning. Uh, clearly, they were spooked by the way they were beaten last time at the LA Dove. I'd like to get Jordan Lewis involved in this bit of vision here. Just want to show what was happening around the clearances. Because time and time again, we'd see Sam Mitchell and we'd see Matt Prittis by themselves. There's the Port... Midfielders retreating early, getting back to help their back six and to make sure that West Coast didn't get goal side. But what it did do, Jordan, I might get you to jump in, is it just it gave them good support deep, but it really made it difficult for them to win any contested ball or any clearance and get any return out of that uh, for the first 20 minutes of the game. Yeah, I think so. I think if, if we looked at the structure around the stoppage, Port Adelaide had one less, which left Sam Mitchell free, and he got a fair bit of the ball in the first quarter. But you see in that little graph there, so many Port Adelaide players rushing back to help their defence, and maybe because that's a young defence and West Coast have a really damaging forward line, but now you, you can have one free, but you don't want two, three, four free because then you can't exit your defensive 50 with efficiency. All right, so let's move on and have a look at what we spoke about. The last thing we said before going into this game was <laughs> when you looked at the no-name back line mm. for the uh, Port Adelaide side, could they stand up to the talls? And uh, Moons, you're all over this. Let's have a look at it because, as you mentioned a few moments ago, early on it was all Port, uh, West Coast Eagles. Petra. Uh, Kennedy was sensational, and Darling in his 150th. If he stood up, he was going to be the man. We said he'd kick four or five, but he's got three to half time. Well, this is the play straight away, Dan. This is what we'll talk about. This is the first real push forward West Coast. And as you saw, Petrie takes the mark, Kennedy, and then on the line, Darling as well. He just started. You, you caught it, let's be honest. You caught it. This bloke, if he's going to have a big day, they're going to win. And Darling started off brutally. So Dan. the three key backs who were involved in trying to spoil it were Howard, Cleary, and then Howard yeah. again on the line with support. But his support players literally kept him away mm. from the spoil. No, they just... I just love the way that these boys, they probably just took the game away from Port Early, Louis, and they said they knew they had a, a small, young, inexperienced back line on them. Well, I think both let's, sides let's put them have, under have worked out. If you get the ball in there quickly, you can actually score. So mm. don't worry about mucking around. They just get the ball in there and give yourself opportunities. Mm. And that's what they have to do, isn't it, now? The midfielders, Dermot said, don't muck around. Try, mm. try to over-possess it. Get it in as fast as you, well, you, you saw, can. You saw Charlie Dixon say to his midfielders, just get it in, just get it in. We can score if we get it in, so just, he's a big boy. He, the main thing with Dixon is he's got to get it in there, Ed, before McGovern can get back yeah. to support. And Cam Mooney said before the game, oh. this is the man. Oh, I love this bloke. I love watching him play. I think he's, we've spoken about his year already, but first finals game, Derm, and this is what I loved about him. His tackling pressure's gone up this year, he's averaging nearly three a game. But he's just said, I want to take this moment. And he realised that he has to be the man. He realised they were struggling early. Someone had to stand up and he grabbed it by the throat and said, I am that man. He's a little bit like, uh, uh, I know he's not playing well at the moment, but like Shane Mumford. He is acutely aware mm. of his size and, and how much use it. that size can <laughs> dominate all others around mm. him. He, he uses it to great mm. advantage. That, could, have that disparity. Had, could have easily had four, yeah. possibly even five, but he's got three, two. So he's nullified Darling at the other end. All right, let's uh, have a recap of what's been going on so far today. And the Sydney Swans absolutely took Essendon to the cleaners at the SCG. Let's go to John Ralph from the Herald Sun in our newsroom. Ralphie, uh, what about the big budster tonight? How is he? Yeah, they obliterated them. 65 points, no other way to say it. Of course, the drama came from Buddy Franklin, who has pulled up well. Now, in typical Bud style, this was the incident that saw him cork his thigh severely. Uh, he did some exercise bike work. He took some Panadols. And then he came out and dominated. Uh, four goals. Callum Sinclair smashed 
Michael Hurley, three goals, four contested marks. It means that Kurt, Kurt Tippett, who is playing in the Neeful now, will not get back into that side next Friday night against Geelong. Now, Joe Watson's last game, certainly no disgrace. 20 hard-won possessions. He was really good early. His coach was effusive in his praise of his legacy. As we show you his and James Kelly's farewell to football today. Can you see what he does as a leader and as a person, not only just in, t in a footy term, but in what he's taught these young men about dignity and uh, loyalty. And um, we've been uh, blessed to have had that opportunity to learn from someone like that. So Good stuff there to uh, Joe Watson and to James Kelly. We'll come back a little bit later on with Johnny Roth for all the other news around the place. Good to see Buddy. Good to see the Sydney Swans went up and found Paul Ruse's old mattress that he used to have strapped to his leg. <laughs> so they big things. Remember those they? things? <laughs> yeah. get it says Grey Nick on the side of it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back right after this. It's West Coast leading at half time by 11 points. Finals footy on Fox, half time. Hey, don't forget Monday night, AFL 360. Coaches night, Chris Scott will have plenty to say. He's still alive, but only just and Jack Revolt. He'll have a lot to say because the Tigers are through to the preliminary final. It's going to be an absolute beauty, AFL 360. All the big news and views here on Fox Footy. OK, let's go into the Altitude Lab now. David King and Nick Del Santo to give us a bit of a look at half-time of what's going on in this game, boys. Thanks again, Ed. Yeah, obviously an interesting first half. Almost two quarters that actually flipped themselves on the head. I want to focus on West Coast defence. But within that, I want to talk about the Port Adelaide ball use, particularly coming out of the half-back line when the heat was on in the first quarter. I've got three clips. They're all different. First one, a kick inside into the corridor, a risky kick against an opposition that wants to come forward, wants to pressure, loves that turnover opportunity, keeps the ball inside their forward half. Poor decision. Take your medicine long down the line. This second one, we know Port Adelaide a really good use by hand. Overdoing it. Have a look at Yo come through here. He's a defender. He's on his toes, ready to come forward, intercepts. And then the last one is just simple ball use. You know, the Eagles, they love to press. They love to zone. You've just got to take your medicine, get it long, get it wide, get yourself out of a dangerous area, and give yourself a chance to reset. Here's the first quarter in isolation. When the heat was on, take the crowd out of it. Six turnovers in the forward half to Port Adelaide's five. It's not a great differential, but here's the difference, Kingy. Two goals, two, 14 to zero. Port Adelaide not able to score off any turnover and the Eagles getting two goals, two easy goals. I want to highlight what was happening with Mitchell early in the, in the game and leaders like this are hard to find. They're rare commodities. But if you give Sam Mitchell space and allow him to be the plus one at stoppage, you'll pay a price. He comes in, he can't believe it. he's looking around. Someone surely's on me. Surely. That's my man over there, Boak. OK, I'll go and hunt around the stoppage. Now, he didn't always get it, but it caused confusion and it caused rollover. Prittis was often getting free. We showed this one, they get the ball inside the forward 50. The tools have been sensational, particularly in the first 10 to 15 minutes. There's Mitchell rolling up, unopposed, off Boak on that occasion. Good handball. We know he's creative. We know he's going to be involved. He knows where to go. Another stoppage. Same situation. He's looking around, where's my man? I haven't got an opponent here. Fantastic. Ebert's going to shoot it. I'll be the, the damage just first receive off. Good pressure. And away they go again. Just involved. Prittis rolling free again, you can see. Now, they send a man in Pal Pepper to Mitchell. So what does he do? He goes and takes Ebert out of the way. Puts a block on to allow Luke Shuey to do his thing. Shuey charges forward from that stoppage, post block, and guess who becomes the goal kicker? And I think it's great leadership to see Sam Mitchell go outside of himself when he's being tagged or ran with or sat on, and when he's not, to become the creator. I think it's a massive moment in this game. The other side of it is where to use Robbie Gray. Robbie Gray started full forward, was there for the first six minutes, didn't go down there. Yeah. They were getting beaten at stoppage. He went in, as he always does, and put the fire out, Dell. So there's, there's a lot of different things going on in the coach's box. And I think Adam Simpson had a big win for the first 35 minutes. And Kenny Hinckley fought back. Mark Rusciuto, you're at the venue at Adelaide Oval. What have you noticed and what have you seen from these two going head-to-head? Oh, it's, a, it's a big tactical game, Kingy, no doubt about it. Early on in the game, they had West off behind the play. I think they were worried about the uh, scoring power of the West Coast Eagles. Then they put West off back onto the wing. They got some real grunt around the midfield, and then that took the, uh, the pressure off down back. So if Port Adelaide continue to put the effort in around the midfield, then it takes the scoring power off the West Coast Eagles. But if... Port Adelaide drop off like they did in that first half and West, Eagle, West Coast Eagles will score heavily again. So Robbie Gray might have to stay up in the midfield, boys. Charlie Dixon's been super up forward. He's been the real barometer for them. Rue, if it's not Charlie Dixon, who do you see as the next forward or play a forward half that can really help to chip in? Because if it's just Charlie, we're not sure he's going to be able to carry that amount of workload. 
That's what uh, I was looking at in the first half. There is no other big key forward up there. So if it's not him, usually it's Robbie Gray. But if Robbie Gray's in the midfield, maybe it's Wingard who bobs up. They are very reliant on Big Dixon to be the man up there. So I don't think there's another big forward up there. Uh, Nick? He's still smiling, Root. He's still smiling <laughs> from Thursday night. He's a happy man. I'll tell you what, Ed, I reckon Ken Hinckley come in and coached a bit negative at the start of this final. You've got to go and win games like this. OK, well, let's see what happens. Uh, as uh, Roo said there, Gray and Wingard, they combined, but uh, Wingard missed the uh, shot at goal. And big Charlie Dixon, well, that's what Cam Mooney, he said before the game, he is the man. Well, he's kicked three goals too. He's going to have to kick at least five or six tonight, maybe to get Port Adelaide home. Game back on when we return. Finals footy on Falk, half time. Here we go. We're already looking forward to next week, Geelong and Sydney. Wow. Cam Mooney, very, very disappointed sure last night. Oh, it's going to be a big one. Geelong finished second on the ladder, and now they're facing straight sets because the Sydney Swans, arguably the most informed team in the competition, can they do a Western Bulldogs and come from outside the four and go all the way? Well, on today's form, you'd have to say they go into this game favourite, and uh, it's going to be a... One hell of a game. Five days, 21 hours, 44 minutes <laughs> and one second. But On who's counting, eh? <laughs> <laughs> bip, bip, bip. Well, we've got to get this one out of the way first. And uh, this is probably, at the moment, proving to be the game of the open week of the final series. Who wins from here, Derm? Quick. I think Port Adelaide will run over him. Port Adelaide for me. Port Adelaide, Wines and Boak need to get into the game a little bit more though. Who's going to, do, who's going to kick the goal? So Dixon, so there it is, our man on the screen. There's Big Koshy, he he's won't. excited. <laughs> he won't, but he's going to be riding them home. Who kicked the goals to get them over the line? I mean, do, do we see those blokes? Do we see uh, 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 Gray come it, in and, and kick the goals that we know he can? Will Wingard start to get some of the ball and, and make the difference? Yeah, well, a lot of the ball is getting directed in Dixon's area. So if he's not marking them, he's bringing them to ground. So Gray, Boak, all these midfielders be squeezing and getting at his feet, giving themselves opportunities to score. Impy. Impy. Might even be a Sam Gray. Might bob up and kick three from second half. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, boys. Well, just, just put Charlie down for six. There you go. Charlie down for six. Just put it down for six. Well, what you about Kennedy? Him, because he's <laughs> only been put down for one so far, and uh, we know he can kick goals. All right, back into it. It's a battle of the midfield. So you can get it forward first. If the Eagles get on top there, they win the game. Well, let's go back to Adelaide Oval. 11 point West Coast Eagles lead. Ryder launched himself at it in the direction of Wines. Slap forward cleverly by Mitchell to Shuey. And now Gaff on the natural left. Beautiful ball to Prittis, who's just racking up the possessions. Back to Shuey. Awkward one for Kennedy. Pushed underneath the footy. A, by a, a bit of cool play on now. Amon. Bit of an ill-directed ball. And I think Hearn's going to collect it and send it back in. Thanks, bit of a juggled mark, but got it. Thumping kick, we know it. He's got plenty of targets inside that 50. Darling Petrie. Darling waiting down. Try to get a handball away. Good pressure. Ebert. Now Kennedy fell into the wrong hands. Former West Coast Eagle gave it to one of his ex-teammates, Shuey. Now, is that out of bounds on the full? Yes, it is. Polek claiming it was off the thigh guard at the Adelaide Oval. No third umpire for that. It's a bit unlucky there. It was an awkward ball to take. Didn't deal with it. And Gaff for his 16th disposal. Narrow. A behind. West Coast lead 12 points. I think he's got a fair case there. Jared Pollock looked like it was above the knee. Got to be below the knee. Yeah, a little bit stiff, I think. Ryder, the government fell over. Ryder yeah, probably should have taken the mark. Now Sam Gray winds. Clever little sidestep. Wingard, slick hands, Gray. Charlie Dixon, he's been enormous. Charlie just floats a little ball. Looking for Westhoff. Didn't quite connect with it the way he would have liked to, Richard. She's moving well, though, Dixon. Just running and receiving there, getting handball receives. I think the player in the second half, if he can really lift his rate, is Paddy Ryder. He's only had one 
disposal, which was a handball, hasn't taken a mark. He can start taking some marks around the ground. That'll really help Port. Gaff to Shuey and Jeddah. Critis again, another disposal. Gaff kept running. Unloaded as he kicked the ball. Good contest from Darling. He was caught behind. Tough one for Houston. Wrapped up. It'll come up again. Speaking of racking them up, Sam Mitchell with 13 disposals in that opening half. He's now had more disposals than any other player in finals. He's overtaken Michael Tuck. His glittering career right to the very end continues. Critis, good chance here for West Coast. Lacroix. Oh, Burn Jones got him beautifully. Well played, Darcy Burn Jones. He had a head of steam up Lacroix, but equal to the task was the port defender. Now Howard sends it out the one-on-one -on -one Hearn. I think we'd have the body strength advantage need. Fought hard pretty well. Set up a long way back. Both Ruckman always going to fall short. Maybe it suited Ryder, but well done, Farty. Did really well. No handle, took out the ruck. It's not working. Yeah, Paddy Ryder, he's getting frustrated, isn't he? He had a career high 20 disposals against West Coast in round seven, as Richo said, just the one so far. To Petrie, almost to Mark Howard, the tackle. Got his kick away. Aim on, cleared a part for Pitta, who just got his kick away. Pressure has gone to another level. Ryder trying to fight his way into the game. Gray, need. Back to Robbie Gray, who runs away. Down the line, awkward handball, well controlled by both. In the end, that was very well done. Dixon gets his body involved. So what about this? This is, I guess, textbook holding the ball, given the way the rules are. Yeah, that's holding the ball. Didn't get the disposal off directly. Paddy Ryder, he was pretty frustrated about it. I think there's less leniency, isn't there, for the Ruckman if they take clean possession. Yeah, you've given it a prior opportunity, Basil, by grabbing it out of the Ruckman. I think that was a fair call. Advantage. So was that one. The players have been consistent tonight. Here's Westhoff. Spearing ball inside forward 50. Shepard read it best. Come out, Charlie. It's a little too tall for the intended target. Wingard. Now the 215s go at. Umpire in good position there. And this will be Amon to launch another forward 50 attack for Port Adelaide. Keeps it low. Here's Houston. Should be disposal number five. Goes out wide and Robbie Gray. Just a behind scored in his third term so far. West Coast way to McKenzie, not paid the mark. Strong pressure from Dixon, Hutchings, Mitchell, Yo's dangerous clearing kick. In the end, might be perfect. Bouncing ball, got to Lacroix, Sheed. Out towards Cripps, the two 15s again, and Pittard there. Amon got it over the line, Shuey got him over the line. He's an aggressive player, isn't he, Charlie Dixon? I'd love to have him in your side. He wanted body, he wanted ball. You know what, in doing that as the board, the players dropping back into the hole might start getting a little bit worried about it. Neither the Ruckman not able to get a hand on it. Taken away by Petrie again. and They really need a lift from Ida. He's getting frustrated. All Australian Ruckman this year and he just... See, even then, the nomination, the boundary throw, and they're, they're making them do it there. I well, know he just seems a bit overkill to me. I'd better get over it, I think. <laughs> His rider again from behind. Play on. Hutchings. Play on. Well done to force his way through. Can the crowd gather it? Even gives chase. Play on. Off the hands of Bonner. Got him. So a high scoring and electrifying start to the match. Much different story in this second half. Just the one behind. West Coast way. 11 point lead up to 12 points. Ryder tried to find Boak. Did get Boak. Now Bonner. Clever sidestep and then he was tripped. If play on. 
Went on quickly, Ebert. Boke again. Now Wingard. It's half an hour now since the Eagles scored a goal. Can Port Adelaide hit the scoreboard, though? They're struggling to score two at the moment. Dixon, beautiful in the fingers. Got it from Need. He goes long and wide. Athletic, but not quite from Sam Gray. It was out of bounds on the full. And Yo wastes no time. Gets things moving. Sandra Gap forced to come back down the line. Dixon almost claiming the mark was Petrie. Heard the call. Boat flicked it out to Pal Pepper. Good one for the defenders to try and cover. McGovern couldn't quite gather it. Well done, Ollie Wines. Found the footy, got it back to Impey. Bending it around, Jarman. Impey hit the post. Suddenly, Richo, it's an arm wrestle. It is. It's really tightened up here, as you'd expect. A lot on line. No tomorrow for the losers, so it's going to be a tight quarter. Shannon Hearn thumps it long. Well done, Howard, to knock it back down. Mackenzie Howard comes through. Mitchell, high ball towards the wing. Tough one, Cripps. In front, had it knocked away from behind. Cleary, good spoil, and the ball over the line again. The ball was pinging around a fair bit in that first half, probably more so than you would have thought for a final, but the way it's been played now, more like an arm wrestle. This feels more like an elimination final. So Ryder, again, he's starting so far back. He's just not even in the contest. For such an experienced player, it's hard to work out at the moment. Pal Pepper guarding the footy. Fighting hard. Yeah, another boundary throwing. Let's have the rider on this boundary throwing. Just got the emotions up at the moment. He... I think it's annoying him having to nominate because he was pinged earlier for it. We should be used to it because they've had to do it all year. He just seems annoyed about it though. Ken Petrie able to get in front. Amon picked it up. Good tackle from Redden. A chance for Robbie Gray. One of the corridor forced back. Down the line, Wingard set himself and read the flight ball beautifully. Further afield to the man, Todd Marshall, just his third game. The number one pick in last year's draft. He's looked cool, goes long, down in the west off direction. It didn't get that far. Here's Dixon. He gets it to west off now. Good smother. Two of them there for the West Coast Eagles. And the defensive unit, Barris. Combining with teammate to get the ball over the line. So West Coast by 11 points as it was at half time. Charlie Dixon, it's not the technical term, but he is feeling it tonight. Ryder, on the other hand, cool. McGovern. Well done by Pal Pepper, but McGovern got another opportunity. Down the lines, that a mark, it's paid. Well done by Houston. Shaping through the corridor, Riley Bonner. Never worked out okay to Burnt Jones, who's been really solid tonight. Chance for Harlan. A little bit of space. Thumping kick. He wanted Sam Gray. And well done, Sam Gray. Out pointed Elliot Yo. Good one-on-one -on -one contested mark. Yeah, they actually shifted the defence across that time. They've been coming in on this broadcast side of the ground. They're inside 50 entries, three or four in a row. They got the ball over to the other side and had a tiny bit more space got it to a one-on-one. -on -one. Coming off a personal best six goals in the round 23 game against the Gold Coast Suns. He's kicked 27 goals for the year. Really emerged as a super consistent player in this side and after that build up he's kicked it 15 rows back out of bounds on the full. What's happened here Richo? He's got it on the outside of his boot and that's where it went. Well done, Richo. You're right up with Gray's anatomy. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Duggan. <Jeez. laughs> Brilliant. Partington. Quickly bouncing ball came forward from Gav. Now there's a chance, although that one out of bounds on the full from Cripps. He's worried out of it. Burn Jones, as we've mentioned. Gets things started again. He's had a lot of the footy. Bonner, Houston, these young players combining. They were slow to get going, but they really worked their way into the game now. Hart 
Butler, awkward one. Eamon had to wait. Shepard got to him. Even a chance here. Came in and landed some support. Poor kick over the head of Sam Gray to Yo, and now maybe West Coast can slingshot. Dixon. Ran and see Dixon. Well done, Charlie Dixon. Oh, he has played some sort of game, Charlie Dixon, doing it all of this. Good speed, Richo. He's got, he's got a great turn of speed. We had the speed on him before on a Telstra tracker, and he was the quickest player on the ground in the first quarter. Inside your big power forwards running down small midfielders from behind. It's a big. It's his uh, fifth tackle as well. He's just played with great intensity tonight. Great aggression. Kick goals. He's put a bit of fear into the opposition. He's been a big factor. He's waited a while for this final. First final. Eamon got it from Powell Pepper. To Zettering ball. High ball. Westhoff came with a big run. Powell Pepper got to the contest. Well done. Gives the ball across to Polek. No score. No score. And after 13 minutes, nearly 14 now in this third term, we have had no goal. Yeah, and it's 21 minutes all up since the last goal in this game. Talked about it tightening up, Baz, and that uh, highlights it. Yeah, real arm wrestle at the moment. Darling, full chest at the footy sheet. Ficked it out. Now a chance again, Bono. He's had some clever moments. Kick smothered off the boot of boat. Ricochet back to Pal Pepper. Handball in hope. Taken by Cripps. Court defenders appear to have this covered. Cleary leads in the race. Burn Jones for support. Thought his way through it well, Cleary. So Pal Pepper winds. It's a nice build up here for the Pal. Good lead provided out there by Westhoff. Boat gives the run. He can run to the 50. Boat. Centering ball in the goal square, Dixon, second attempt. Front and centre, Robbie Gray, as he kept it in. Thank no. you, Charlie. Are you serious? Yes. Not happy, Charlie. Nathan Huddy. I think that's a free kick. Pulled him down over the shoulder. Charlie channeling John McEnroe. He had a point. Polek ran into McGovern. Well done, Gaff. He just keeps getting the football. All close to the line, and Polek takes it over. A, a little bit nicer than John McEnroe, though. <laughs> Not much. Not a little bit. Now the crowd. Right in this game. 11 points West Coast lead, as they did at halftime. Through the hands of Powell Pepper, picked up by Vardy, Redden. Quick kick forward, Darling couldn't quite complete it. Pittard bending it around back inside forward 50. Pow Pepper over the top again. Ryder crashing in, Pow Pepper. Love the way he plays the game. Just throwing his frame at it. First season, and he was the round one NAB rising star, Sam Pow Pepper. Party again, he's done well tonight. Pal Pepper at the bottom of that pack again. He's burrowing in. Hutchings, Polek, Wines, back to Polek. They're lifting Port Adelaide. High ball now. Top of the square. Wingard the flyer. Westhoff stayed down. Swatted out by Yo. Race on. Shuey. Got his foot to it first. Now Burn Jones. Might have been a trip in there. Not called by the umpire. Coming hard was Houston. Shuey won the day. Got to Sheed. Won the free kick. It's been living in ports for half the last five minutes and quite often the Eagles will get one entry and kick a goal. That happens so often. Rare mistake from Sam Mitchell. Port about 10 to the last 11. Inside 50s make that 11 to 12 without scoring now. Maybe an opportunity. They've got to get a goal out of all this dominance so They haven't. And you can just see it going straight down the other end of the Eagles scoring and that would be disappointing because they are real dominating now. Jarman Ippi, the only inclusion from last week, the round 23 game, into the side. Aiden no, Johnson missed out. Can Ippi, well, he decides just the conservative to pop it to the top of the square. Ryder in the contest. McGovern under pressure. Look at Charlie Dixon, muscle his way through. Wingard got the goal. Wingard's got the goal. I believe it's a goal. I just want to see if it was touched off the boot. I think that'll 
will stand as a goal. So that's McGovern. Oh, I reckon oh. McGovern touched it. He definitely did. On the angle there, it looks touched. Great camera work, that. And that's what it's for, the score review. Yeah, brilliantly done from our camera crew. Zeroing in on that one. Review complete. Decision on the scoreboard. They won't like this. Yes, they will. Oh, my. Yes, they will. Well. Oh, that's, uh, that can't be right. Wow. Well, you almost wonder, Richo, have they pushed the wrong button upstairs? Uh, if we, we must, they must be seeing something we didn't see here, because that was touched. Am I, are you with me, guys? Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's absolutely. On, on the third angle that we saw, it was a tight angle. Oh, that's going to be a big... Uh, 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 and... Uh, is it possible the hand touched it and then it comes off the boot after the hand? Is that what the third up has got with? Well, maybe, Das. Maybe. Certainly a big piece of McGovern's hand on that footy. And a controversial call. It's back to a five-point margin. Hearn did well. So it then had to have touched his boot after McGovern's hand. And, gee, I, I couldn't uh, make that out. Well, remembering, of course, that it was called it a was goal. It was called a goal, so it wasn't maybe saying it wasn't categoric, so he couldn't overrule it. So the benefit of the doubt, I think, went back in Port Adelaide's favour. Closest they've been since the West Coast Eagles kicked the opening goal of the game. Port Adelaide charging, charging at West Coast. They did say it was a goal. They didn't say umpire's call. So, McGovern's hand... Did Big Mc... piece of the football. So did McGovern push the ball down onto his leg? Is that what it is? Maybe. I, I think that's what it is. McGovern's pushed it down onto his leg. He's Mitchell, Jedda. Jedda's gone wide with that one. It's inside 50 for West Coast. They haven't been inside 50 all that often in this term. But they get a stoppage here. And look at that. That's how few and far between they have been. The Eagles by five points, just over seven minutes remaining in this third term. Ryder almost into the back of Vardy. Bonner's been impressive tonight. The youngster, just his fourth game of AFL football. Dixon takes on Petrie. McKenzie and a good tackle. Marshall had him. And Todd Marshall did well. Wines now streaming through the middle of the other table. Kicks out wide. He pissed off the center. He has dropped. Absolute howler there. And dug it back the other way to Shuey. Clear out! Clear has got a runner. Duggan ran into trouble. And holding the ball. Took him on. Yeah. Well, you heard the call from the umpire. Said he took him on. Robbie Gray. Wins the free kick. All the momentum now with Port Adelaide. They haven't been able to get the score on the board. High ball, Hearn the skipper. Move on. Play on. 47 plays 42. What a final this has been. Vardy up in front, couldn't mark. Redden did well, mopped up. Bonner got his handball forward, Prittis over the footy. Over him was Wines, got the ball out to Ebert. Now they move it forward, Marshall, he missed Impey with the handball. And Impey just helps it over the line. Let's have a look at the Telstra tracker for this quarter. And this time we're looking at distance covered for the whole game. And I reckon Andrew Gaff will be the man. That's my guess to us, he normally covers the most distance. Picked up by Mitchell. Shuey with a turn of speed. Over the head, the intended target now, Hartlett. Oh, well played. Clever little sell of the dummy oh, and pushing it back, I reckon, against Petrie. Just hasn't been Paddy Ryder's luck. They really need to get hold of him. They need him to lift. 
So Petri. Wins the free kick, sends this one long down the line, and Vardy fell over, no free kick. Hartman wants to send it across goal and see if they can change direction here and crack something from defence. So Pittard short. Houston with footy. Care required here. Boke. That was long. Good kick. Wingard. He's lifting two. Squares things up. Lines. What a very clever mark that was. From the edge of the square. Sends a high ball. Gray went looking for Petrie. Initiated the contact. Free kick goes West Coast way. Ronnie. Probably wasn't the right option there from Wines because that's a big mismatch. It was going to a 50-50 and Petrie had a big advantage there. Short line from Petrie. Sam Mitchell. I suppose a number 19 coming up. Always but capable of going long on the left. Pittard had a good look at the footy. Now the race is on. Hack forward. Partington it was. She can't keep it in. So less than four minutes remaining in the third quarter. Five-point ball game. They've hang on and defended really well here because 60% time in fourth half. They haven't had many opportunities, the Eagles, but Port haven't been able to get back in front of them. And they've led since the two-minute mark, Rich, of the opening turn. The lead they haven't surrendered. Partington did well. Sheed to Mitchell. Now down towards full forward. Darling, Kennedy... Houston got him. Good tackle. Needed to be. Umpires are there. Ball's come out. Preps got it across from Darling. Through high onto the boot and out of bounds on the full. Mark Soderstrom, seven minutes. We can see more than seven minutes. Any reason for that long sit down? No, he's all OK. I think the ball's been on the other side of the ground. He's been itching to get on for a little while. Uh, but all OK with Justin Westhoff. He's on right now, in fact. Hearn, Prentice pops it back inside forward 50. The Port defenders have really done well since the early stage of the first quarter. They've been able to get a bit more consistency in their cover off for each other. And oh, like Darling and Kennedy are going to rip this one apart, Rich Open. Credit to the Port defence. Uh, pegged it back really well, but that was on the back of their midfield. Winning contested footy. You're not letting the Eagles have first crack at it. And then that helps the fence out, clearly. So McGovern, again, a long, slow ball down the line. Outmarked. Burn Jones, but a big factor oh, in this game. Hang, hangs in the air. Oh, uh, yeah. Almost Thanks, almost for West Coast. Westhoff equal to the challenge. Held it just long enough. So Westhoff out to Cleary. Inside defensive 50. Cleary gets it back from Ebert and out runs Duggan. Then goes wide, pokes it out. Terrific mark. Sam Gray takes it, and away he goes. He's had two bounces. Can draw the man over the top. Need has to wait for it. Gets it. Good handball in front of Burn Jones, who slapped it forward. Sam Gray kept coming. Now Robbie Gray around the corner to put them in front. Behind. Four points the lead. What a game this has become. What a game of finals footy. And look at that. West Coast clinging to a lead that they have not surrendered all night. Their last four goals of the game have been all Port Adelaide. McKenzie wants to get it moving. Horrible kick. Slap forward by Westhoff. Back on the ground. Now he drives it to the edge of 50. Barris did well. Always in good position. He had a gaff. A little hesitation. Down the line to West off. Partington came through and got a good contest. So here's the uh, Telstra tracker now with the distance covered. And Andrew Gap normally is the man that leads that 11.1 case. Him, Travis Boke. It's not his best night, but he's still covering the ground. Brad Ebert's always been a great endurance runner as well. West Coast goalless in this third turn. Mitchell had it too long. Advantage paid. Polek goes quickly. Ryder, not quite the mark. Dixon, how fitting would this be? He kicks a behind. A behind, and it's three points. She 
missed. His, his mobility tonight. I don't think I've ever seen him move as well. He's always had ag agility for a huge man, but he's doing everything tonight, Dixon. He looks in great shape, doesn't he, Chuck? Yeah. He's kicked 3-3 three, three for the night. He's been involved in everything positive from a port point of view. West Coast had issues getting it out of their defence. Darling came up. Mitchell couldn't quite get it. Fights hard again and then into the back of Sam Gray. Let's go. Come on. Out. <laughs> Some words of encouragement Out, from Sam Mitchell. So a bit of a halt play. It allows West Coast to get back. Set up their zone. They headed the Dixon direction. He got rid of one defender, McKenzie. That, that's good umpiring, though, there. You know, there's plenty of passion in the game. Players, there's going to be a little bit of push and shove that's not hurting anyone. He's up here. The umpire just tells him to get out and you move on with it. Don't have to pay soft little free kicks and stuff like that. 1 3 to 1 behind in the third term. Gap, Mitchell, now Duggan. Drives the ball towards the wing, but again, chopping it off his pit hard. So they've got time. 20 seconds left on the clock. West Coast Eagles defenders tangling. Ryder gets it to Need. Need. Out of bounds on the full. 10 seconds left on the clock. Well, you'd think West Coast are going to go goalless here in this third term. Maybe, well, Port, maybe the chance for a Port Adelaide turnover. Well, Port have had 17 entries, one goal three this quarter, so they've held up the Eagles under siege, haven't given up much on the scoreboard. 17 inside 50s to nine this quarter. The one goal to Port, which was a dubious one at best. Three quarters time, siren looming. And it won't go anywhere because this one is going to go right down to the wire. Three-quarter time here at the Adelaide Oval. West Coast, 7-5-47, Port 6 8, 44. The Eagles, a three-point lead here at quarter time. Big, big finish coming up to this one. First dates, it's business in the front, party in the back. I'll prepare for a date with a bottle of rum and a shower. The fun starts Tuesday. West Coast, that was Port Adelaide's way. West Coast lead it by three points, seven goals to six at three quarter time, exactly as they did in their only other finals meeting. They led that one, seven goals to six, 2007 quarter final, qualifying final, and Port Adelaide went on to win that one by three points. Mark Soderstrom, what a finish we've got. Well, Baz, red hot at the moment. Uh, clean bill of health for both sides here at the last break. Adam Simpson during the week talking about Paddy Ryder conceded that in both the games during the year, Ryder perhaps picked up maximum votes. Right now tonight, as the boys have pointed out, struggling a bit, just the one handball and five tackles. Petrie, 12 possessions, five marks in that goal in the first quarter. Ryder leading the hitouts, but to advantage, you can see just the eight there. In terms of close games, well, the form line not good for either side. West Coast in 2017, nine games, two goals or less. They are three and six. And Port Adelaide have only won four of their last eight in games that have been decided by two goals or less. Thanks, Soders. That's the form line. And it all goes out the window now. Who can find a way here in this elimination final? The thing about Paddy Ryder, he hasn't had a good night, but he can still have a major influence. He only has to have one good quarter. Port probably win the game. He's got to stay in it, Paddy. Absolutely, Richard, the winner gets to take on GWS next Saturday night up there at Spotless Stadium in Sydney. Ben Jones, been really solid tonight, not his best kick. Oh, oh. Shannon Hearn. I reckon it's going to come down to one of these big guys, Kennedy or, 
Or Dixon to take a contested mark. It is so hard to get anything going inside 50. Thumps the ball long down the line. Petrie has worked hard tonight. Houston gets back there. And then smothered again by Drew Petrie. Who is moving incredibly well. 331st game. Maybe it is Josh Kennedy Richo for West Coast. Just the one goal. Yeah. Six disposals. Hardly seen it since the first quarter, Josh Kennedy. Barty up in front. Dwell. Wines. Had his hands on it. Lacra. Ebert. Good tackle. Spills out the back. Eamon. Thumps the ball towards half forward. It went through the hands of Shepard. Dixon in the area. They've got out of his road every time. And he wins the free kick, does he? Yes. What a game he's playing. Come back on. He's influential every time he goes near the footy. Not that time. Hutchings in the road of Ryder. It spills to Boak. Eyeball. Not sure if it's the required journey. Almost. Uh, no mark. In fact, it was Wingard. Ball on the deck. Still alive. Umpire slow the whistle. And it will come up again. That wing. Paddy Ryder going in. That last goal that Wingard did get off that goal review, that was created by Dixon with a big hard ball get. He didn't get a stat for anything, but he put it into the path of Wingard. That's the only goal we've seen for a long time. Oh, Ryder out of midair, shot at goal, and, and as you said, have to be your best game, but it can still be your night. And Ryder nearly with a miracle goal there. We're back to just two points. Last five scores of the night. Port Adelaide's way. Oh, oh. Just one point in that third term for the West Coast Eagles. But still they cling to the lead. Two points. Yo's long ball. Barney marks. Well, they just have to score. They're not going to be able to hang on to this lead. We know that. A full quarter almost to play. Port Adelaide coming at them hard. Sheed held up. Nothing obvious to go to. Jetta. High ball now. Inside 50. Up in front. Pittard. Good mark. Well, that one point they did get in the third quarter came from that uh, dodgy out on the full court. So, uh, apart from that, they have created no chances in that third quarter. Good have no there. shots at goal. Sorry, Richard. Good effort there from Vardy. Really closed down the space of Amon and nearly created something out of nothing. Amon, that's a left-right bender and a poor kick. Out, come out. Into the come lap of Sheed. He's got a short ball on there to Cripps, which Angle. prepared to Play take on. the risk. They've done a lot of this since quarter time. Hey. A lot of long bombs. Well, that's a floating mongrel punt. Good luck marking that. Good tackle from Cripps. Wrapped up the umpire. He's tried. Held well, on to the whistle. Thank you. Opportunity again for the West Coast. That was an absolute sack. <laughs> Should have seen. Didn't spin once. <laughs> A real scrambler inside 50. Sheed. Then Vardy. Quickly. Back towards Kennedy. He's got two to beat. Was it touched? Was it touched? I'm not sure. Umpire is sure. Remember, of course, this one has been called a behind. So, again, it would need to be an overrule. And that looks like it's touched the sleeve. Do we agree? Well, my eyes play tricks on me with these. I've got no idea. Big up to the third up by Basil. It does? I don't know. Well, you couldn't You can't overrule conclusively it. say that yeah. it hasn't. We were surprised last time, though. And I wonder, did Kennedy get a touch? But third umpire, review complete. Less Decision interested in on that the scoreboard. one. So Paul stands are behind. Three points to lead for the Eagles. Polek closing hard was Yo, but Polek equal to the task. Now he shapes to come out commentary side of 
Adelaide Oval. Dougal Howard kicked eight goals in the central this year. Howard, they've turned him into a defender. He had a knee reconstruction last year. All that kick was a little nervous. Just trying to patiently build their way through this. Howard thought about the knee kick and now Robbie Gray, a pretty safe option. He wants to get it moving. Good play. Just so creative, Robbie Gray, and everything he does, they've worked their way through. Need the bounce didn't quite sit for him. He's got to go back and win a hard footy now. Partington gave away a free kick. It was a bit careless by the young West Coast team. So Need down the line wants to go. Burn Jones. There was a touch on air from Barris. Didn't matter. Got to Eamon, but Eamon wastes that one. Kicks it out of bounds on the full. It was such a composed passage of play until that point there, Eamon. Just tried to kick the cover off it. He could have dabbed it to Dixon, who made a good little lead. Rush of blood there. Mackenzie. Down the line in front right. A really well read Shuey. Then he ran into Burn Jones, who stuck the tackle. Hutchings approaches it. Houston got a little clever one back to Polak. Couldn't quite get a handle on it. And through for a boundary throw. Over an hour of play, Dar, since the last West Coast Eagles goal. 61 minutes. That man's team have not been able to find the major opening. That put them up by 31 points at that stage, Basil. And now it's just three points. Boak. Can Port Adelaide take the lead? West off wrestling with McGovern. What a wrestle it was. Fierce off the ground. Marshall. No score. Maybe not a bad result for Port Adelaide. They get a restart right alongside the behind post. Yeah, it is a good result, I reckon. It's so hard to move the footy now. If you can get it into your 50, you're probably going to keep it there for a while. Right in front for the entire match. The West Coast Eagles hanging on with a three-point lead at the moment. Wines oh, burst no. his way through. He won't miss from there. Only Wines and Port hit the lead. So the power have now kicked the last five goals in a row in this game. And they find themselves for the first time with a three-point lead. But, well, Bash, you said it. It's probably not a bad result. They get the throw in. They get a stoppage. And what a play from Ollie Wines. Would have been a set play. He just burst through. Had nobody on him. It was a soda for Wines in the end from that close. And finally, after almost 100 minutes trailing, Port Adelaide in front. They lead by three points. The winner plays GWS next Saturday night. Ryder, he is lifting. Gets them moving out of the middle again. McGovern hasn't had a huge influence. This man has Dixon. Pal Pepper, Vardy, Prudus. Just kept shoveling the ball forward. Wines had it, lost it. Hartlett, Wingard, quick one towards the 50. McGovern in the road marks. Goes quickly. What a Lecrae, he's turned it over. Houston read it well. Port are now back in front in the contested footy. It's taken a while. They've worked their way back, and that's why they now have the three-point lead. They've done well to turn that around. It was all one way. It's about halfway through that second quarter. Dixon... He got them going. Barris down the line. Easy pickings for Cleary. Starting to find it nicely. Polak with an outside of the boot job. Dixon in the one-on-one. -on -one. He got rid of McKenzie. Fell over himself. Little handball from Impey was good. Back to Marshall. Hands it back to Powell Pepper. Has he got enough on it? He has! Two in a row to the power. Last six goals of the game. And the only two of the final quarter. And they have got an irresistible force behind them at the moment. And you feel like West Coast, all of a sudden, it's a long, long way back from here, Richard. It is, because they haven't scored a goal for an hour. And now they need two just to get back in front. Sam Powell Pepper. What a moment. First year player, 15 games, and now a final. Look at the celebration from the 19-year-old. What about the finish? 
So Port <laughs> by nine points. Handball out the back. Mitchell, quick kick forward. Got to hit the scoreboard. Partington over the fee, wraps it up, keeps it in. Not a bad result. Baz, big moment for Pal Pepper, and he's just about taken cold status here at Port Adelaide since the moment he threw Sean Burgoyne around like a rag doll in that JLT series. He's got the highest selling uh, jumper number in the club at the moment, and he's had a reorder of badges. The only bloke in the team to do it. Yeah, and he's delivering sodas tonight. Five style Riley Bonner. Look at that. Slick movement, great speed, a couple of bounces, charging through the middle of the Adelaide Oval to Boat. He's got a runner, Empey dropped it. Goes back and wins it again, spearing ball to Dixon. And they are all over it at the moment, point out that Charlie Dixon can go back and line up for his fourth goal. If he kicks this, Dixon, I reckon uh, it'll be just about the biggest noise you've heard here at the Adelaide Oval for a while. You see, he got him going, and he's going to be pumped up if he drills this. Let's get behind this one, Charlie Dixon. The crowd just holding their breath, and he pulled it across the face. So I think West Coast now, Richard, have got to be a bit more aggressive with their ball move. They've got to take some risks. They have to kick the next goal in this game. There's no tomorrow. So to get those goals, they've got to try and get the ball moving a bit quicker. Easier said than done, the way this game's been played. Terrific mark by Cripps from the long jet of kick in. Ryder was in the best position. Cripps had to go and did. No surprise, they go back to Jetta, looking for run. They try and get something going. Hutchings played well tonight, showed a lot of courage as well. Short one for Mitchell. They don't want to go overboard with it, because it is only two goals with a heap of time left, but... Mitchell high ball, bit of a nothing kick really, Partington though, Kennedy knew there was support, Shuey ran into trouble in Howard, looked up, found Prittis, Matthew Prittis lose tonight, it's his last game, the Brownlow medalist win, he sees another day, same story for Drew Petrie, same story for Sam Mitchell. Second term was the last time the West Coast Eagles kicked a goal. This to get it back to four points. Prittis kicks a goal. And he's had a very, very good night. Matt Prittis composed there. He wasn't going to miss that one. That contested mark off the kick in. That was crucial for them being able to move the ball down the ground. A oh, huge effort, Matt Prittis. 23rd disposal, first goal of the night for the man, and look at the relief on his face. Only his sixth of the season, Darcy, what a time. Big centre clearance coming up. Ryder did really well. Hamble a little too hot though for Gray. Opens the door. Cripps in there. Sliding in Jetta. Pal Pepper. Fighting hard. Polek. Here's Prittis again. Was he taken high? Aff sends it forward. Kennedy's been quiet. And Cleary. He'll be happy with that. But a good chance again for West Coast. They get a good look at one deep inside their forward 50. Drew Petri to do the rough work. Can they kick two in a row now to get the lead back? Had it for so long. Unable to score a goal. Prittis getting the job done. Loose ball inside 50. Gaff hooks it around. Top of the square. Petri! Oh, big Drew. Big hands. Big moment. Look at that, Drew Petrie, who's had a good night. Paddy Ryder hasn't been his night, and look at him, he's shattered Ryder. He knows how important that mark is. Drew to the Petrie Eagles. for his second goal in game number 331. West Coast are back in front. 
Justin Langer, who spoke to the West Coast Eagles before they ran down the race. A board member now with the club. Coach of the Western Warriors. Double century on this ground in a test match against New Zealand. Well, they've lifted almost against the odds here. Certainly against the run. West Coast by two points. Great goal, Drew Petrie. Had a good night. And let's have a look at the Telstra trucker in this last quarter. Going to have a look at uh, maximum speed. And have a look at Drew Petrie there. He's in the top five, the old boy. 32.4. He's still got some run in his legs. Prentice again sends the Eagles forward. Darling tracking the footy. Harlett got back. Played it pretty well, Hamish Hartlett. High bouncing ball. Gray attacked it hard. So too did Duggan. Sheed in there as well, and Mopaya says, give it to me. Fast no goals in 67 minutes for the West Coast Eagles, and then two in three for the Eagles to get the lead back. Ryder did okay that time. Ebert, Gray, important hand in there, Jetta. Then the ball quickly kicked forward, well chopped off again, Burn Jones. Got it to Wines, Cripps was the quick kicker. Long one from Powell Pepper, bounce the ball, Sam Gray. Had plenty of time, gets around Shannon Hearn, squares the ball up. West Coast defenders got in each other's road. Yo and Shepard, ball out the back. Dixon, handball. What do they need? Needs got it. Boak, the skipper, back on goal. A behind only. A behind only. And it is the West Coast Eagles by a point. Is there some tension in the house at the moment here at the Adelaide Oval? Elimination final, one point margin, less than a half a quarter of money. Gaff, some composure required here, Duggan. The courage to kick the ball and hit a target. I don't know about that, Duggan. It just was always going to be Hamish Hartlett. He spears it back. Out the back, Wingard! He went the miracle mark. So it will be 50. Drop the ball. Drop the ball, Sam Gray. Just a brain fade from Sam Gray. That's crucial. So we got just a millimetre away from getting a touch on it. And then this. Drop the ball. Can't do that. Short 50. Cripps has got it in the middle of the ground. Chips it over the top. Stop darling. One out if he goes quick. Luke Partington, South Australian. Back home. Playing in a final for the West Coast Eagles, Dom Sheed. Short one, Lacroix. West Coast by a point. Just over eight minutes remaining. Shuey, no. Wines, yes. Long handball for Need. Chase is on. Shepard couldn't get him. Sent him a little wider. Impy now. It was a tough bounce for him. McKenzie. Hearn. Kick is OK. McGovern. McGovern. Short. Finds Sheed. Now, in the event this is a draw, we get a six-minute break and then five minutes each way. A point the difference. And who knows, maybe that's on the cards, but Gavin short to Vardy. Just can he providing a lead before? Just hasn't been able to find a lot of the footy. The Australian full forward. Now, Redden. Polak trying to fling a boot at it. Here is Kennedy. Coming through, Darling. Cleary's been good. Only twice before have we had extra time. Collingwood in West Coast in 2007. There's a whistle there. West off, Polek. Got around Gaff. Now he sends it long. High ball, McGovern. Well done. Just worked off his opponent, Todd Marshall, the young man who's. Done well tonight, played his role, that's for sure. McGovern hasn't had a huge influence. Jetta. Now Shuey. Down the line to Lacroix. Marks in front of Bonner. Eagles by a point. 9-6, 8-11. Just over seven minutes remaining. First elimination final. Loser out, winner on to GWS. Prittis just blazed away. Polnick back there. Sweeps the kick. Out wide, he had a target and a good one. Robbie Gray, just casually, a couple of bounces, and then took the tackle on and 
They might turn it over here. They will, West Coast. Petrie come in. Gaff off the ground. West Top did well. He had to sort of keep waiting there, Robbie Gray, because he was waiting for someone to make position up the ground. Wingard was trying to make position, but he was just too far away. Petrie again, free kick. Holding, Hal Pepper. Sam Pan Pepper, holding. And he's had a big Four night, Hal Pepper. Really effective. Gets it on to Polek. Wasn't great delivery. Good service recovery from Polek. All around the body to the skipper. That was brilliantly done. Now a tough one. Sam Gray, interesting fly. Barra stayed down. Dixon's on the bench, Baz. They need to get him back on. He's just got on now. Critis, disposal number 27 coming up. They've had nothing to go to twice without Dixon on the ground. So he can't go off now. Critis down the line. Darling in the middle. Port Adelaide, Mark. Dixon onto the ground and influential straight away. And that's why. He needs to take one of those inside 50 in the last five minutes. He seemed to hurt his hamstring there. Hopefully only cramp, only twice the extra time. West Coast and Collingwood 2007. Hawthorne and North Melbourne in 1994. Marshall did well there. She nearly marked that. And about three quarters of it. The umpire's called Whistle. a boundary throwing back there. And so just five minutes 37 remaining in this final. Let's have a look at this, Shuey. Yeah, definitely over the line. Down up Byron. Good position. So a one-point ball game. The West Coast Eagles with the lead. Just minutes remaining in this final. Ryder. She a prior opportunity. Knight. Yeah. You'd still be the man here, Ryder. Oh, we saw that hit out. The famous one to Robbie Gray to win the game only a few weeks back. He flipped it out the back. This time picked up by Prittis. Hutchings down the line. Kennedy crashed the pack. Ricochet to Sheed. Can he get it over the top? Yeah. On goes McLaren. Coming across. Amon sock it off the ground. Can Gaff pick it up? Daly over the top. He suckers the ball forward. Unusual decision. Cleary hands it back to Need. And Need with some space does well. They've dodged a bullet port Adelaide. Terrific mark. Not paid to Marshall. Wow, huge call. Yo, back to Hearn. Runs into trouble. Wingard got him. Hey, you've got to give young Marshall credit there. He led 60 or 70 metres to give them that outlet kick. He didn't take the mark, but he gave them an option. Wingard, right up. No mark this time. Back of the pack, Shepard. Was that the West Coast Eagles' opportunity? Three soccers, they couldn't hit the ball flush on any of them. Just couldn't get the purchase. It's nail-biting stuff, all right. It's nail-biting wherever you are. How good is finals football? Scores a level with two minutes and one second remaining. Almost unbearable here for Port fans as Ryer, well done, got it to Gray. Wobbles ones to 50. Where's Dixon? Look at the pack. Courage all round. McGovern in there. And a handful of West Coast Eagles supporters here on the edge of their seat. Clock down to a minute 50. Port Adelaide have just taken Todd Marshall off with the ball still on that side of the ground. So Sam Gray's gone forward, sitting in a 50 on his own at the moment. Mitchell had it. That high contact, Petrie still going in there. Prittis, Boak. They fight after the football. Empire comes in and it will go up again. 97 seconds left on the clock. The scores are level. Got one on ones inside their 50 point. Gray picked it up. The star, the All Australian back to Ebert. Little kick forward. Clearing kick from Gaff. They want to live with the poor fans. What's the umpire going to do? Oh, yeah, he's wow. paid it. He's paid it. Wow. Huge call. Houston sent it inside 50. Can Dixon take a mark? Off hands. Picked up by Hearn down there. Through come power play winds. He got taken by Gaff. Through the hands of Ebert. Picked up by Gaff again. Amon kicks it inside 50. Wingard. Shepard from behind. Minute four remaining. Look at the coaches. Bottom right of your screen, Adam Simpson. Nail-biting stuff for him. Ditto Ken Hinckley. Just over a minute remaining. Any 
score so valuable here for Port Adelaide. Can they get one? Ryder. Prittis. No mark. Ball still alive. Burn Jones. Now it comes back. Howard. High ball. No metres gained. Hard one. He comes again. Burn Jones. Goes long. It's been touched. Can't concede here. West Coast. Into the post. And it is out of bounds. Out of bounds. No score. Scores level. 38 seconds on the clock. Oh, how well did Eric McKenzie play that? Not to concede a rush behind. So the pressure on this boundary throw in. Ryder and Petrie, they just need a score here. Shuey runs onto it. Mitch cleaned him up fairly. Wines. Oh, well done, Prittis. Well done, Prittis. 29 seconds remaining in this game. Scores are level. We might be going again. We might. Put Adelaide, though. Right area of ground for them. Ryder, Petrie, what a battle it's been. Shui, 24 seconds on the clock. Kicks wide. Mark's been taken. It's coming back in. Quickly the ball forward. Howard's long ball. McGovern. McGovern marks. 12 seconds left on the clock. In fact, clock continues to run for just the third time in finals history. Are we going to extra time? Yes. We are set him up again. So six minute break in play. And then we go five minutes either way. And if it's still locked up after that, it is golden point effectively. Bit of confusion. The players, I think, trying to work out what's happening here. And the runners go out. Last draw in a final, the 2002 Grand Final. And here are the rules, Sam Mitchell with some leadership and some composure. Out from the coaches, what about this? Three finals have been blowouts and now a tie here at the Adelaide Oval, you can't believe it. We had a feeling it was going to be the tight one coming here today. And it certainly is. What about Eric McKenzie, Does He saved it for them. He didn't rush it. Finals footy on Fox post game brought to you by Yates Zero Rapid. <laughs> oh wow, here we go. The last time we had a draw. Hang on, Sammy Mitchell over just checking what's going on. Five minutes each way, Sam. That's what happens when you've got six minutes. Change of ends. Break. Change ends. target ends for a start. Yep. yep. Alrighty, so. We come back to Adelaide Oval. The last time was a draw in a final was the 2010 Grand Final. We had to come back next week. Not doing it this time. <laughs> and, of course, in 2007, it was West Coast Eagles versus Collingwood. And it was the Pies who ran over the top in extra time, despite being over at Subiaco Oval. So, what do you reckon, boys? They absolutely stopped the West Coast Eagles at the nine-and-a-half-minute mark of the second term. Cripps kicked the goal to put them 31 points in front. Then it was Dixon, Amon, Ebert. And we got to half-time, 11 points of difference. Then one goal in the third term, Derm. That was to Wingard. And then they kicked the next two. So they kicked two, four, six in a row, Port Adelaide, to go to a nine-point lead, only to see West Coast Eagles kick the last two of the game. And then it was comedy capers in a lot of ways, wasn't <laughs> well, it? Well, the thing was, once Port Adelaide hit the front, I was convinced that they were just going to mm. run over them and win by four goals. It was like a boxer, the West Coast Eagles, who just swung from the ropes. They were just going on. Well, I was hoping to land one, weren't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. And we have a look here. At well, this is the Travis Boak This is Boak time. Look at this. He keeps it in. There's a man free. It goes over. It hits the post. Oh. That's to make it a draw. Wow. Damn, oh. as you said, they're throwing it from the cheap seats. <laughs> they had nothing left in the last bit there. Uh, oh. what, it's a great contest, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's no perler in terms of things we're seeing. Oh, great highlights. Level, but it's such a contest. This is just you, you watch warfare. the whole game and you don't take interest in each contest. The last five minutes, you're watching each contest and the result of it. I mean, McKenzie, how huge was now, that play? This was the moment for the West Coast Eagles. Over the top it goes. Lacra, who's just been a goal to, sneak just all side his foot life. It. Just oh, side-footed in. That's it. And these slippery balls. And then off the ground again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Gaff. He was spent. He up was to his spent. Name. George, could I ask you? We've seen the ball slipping left, right, and centre. Now I saw uh, they they set one in the Triple M this week. The uh, the new balls for the finals. They've got this plastic coat on them, and if you get a drop of rain on it, they slip all over the joint. 
It, it is hard to get. That. I think with those two instances, they're trying to kick the cover off yeah. it. Mm. And it's wet the, the grounds, Dewey, so just tap it along the ball. goes the 20 metres. Anyway. Yeah. So I think they maybe thought they were hotter than they were. They had a chance to pick it up and give it off. Uh, but like a cricket ball, that cover does come off mm. yeah. after a little while yeah, but playing I, with it. Uh, we'll talk about it later, but yep. they should give it the place to kick them in before the game. We, we sit here, anyway. we're all we're grown men carrying Screaming. on like idiots, but seriously, it is such. it would be so hard. You, you, you've been there, Louis. When a pressure game, game like this, Free you're kick. always going to make what, mistakes. Now, yeah. Guys, what about this? We might roll this back. This was a huge call. Yeah. Wrong call, right call there. Oh, I want to have another look at it. So I reckon it's the right call. The way they've been adjudicating them this year, that is the right call. He's a left footer and he screwed it away across his body to get it to the boundary side. Look at this, though. The, 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 the full marks to everyone. As, uh, is this the McKenzie? As Lou used to say in the old days, they're dog tired out there and the umpires <laughs> put the whistle away <laughs> and they're playing from memory. Good play there by Shepard over line. Let's have a look. Let's have another again. look. Here it goes. All yeah. right. So there's the smother. Good smother. Ball off hands. So oh, that's Gaff. He's kicked it. There's five blokes out there. Doom, you can't say that's in. I'm playing that. Stiff. Sorry. Oh, I'm playing that. The crowd, crowd got into him a little bit there. Did <laughs> <laughs> there's a so crowd free kick that one. <laughs> that's officially the best kick of all time. If he's been able to bounce it three times over the line and out of bounds with his back turned to the plate. You're, you're three talking plays. about the principle, Ed, but the way it's been consistently umpired this year, that's a free kick. Yeah, probably. We, I agree with you yeah, on can, principle. Can we get uh, can we get the Eric McKenzie up because that was arguably one of the great. Well, saves of all time. Comes. Talk us through this, man. Just have a look at this. I mean, this is where you, you can't rush it through, obviously, to give the point away. You lose the game. You can't take this out of bounds, really, because it's going to be a free kick. Instead, he just took the hit for the team right into the post. That, that nearly is play of the year. Isn't it? Play of the year. Watch, and the, guy, watch the umpire here, because he actually misses it in the first instance, because the ball hits the post here. Right? There it is. But he doesn't blow the whistle. Watch. He waits, he waits, he waits, he waits, he waits. Get that super off, will <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I tell you, to the absolute F degree, that was deliberate because yep. it never went over the line and in the end he, he pulls his left over. hand around and drags it over. Now, we don't want it deliberate, no. but to the degree, to the law, that was a deliberate. What, what, uh, I, what I did love, though, is Sammy Mitchell has taken control of the group. Boys, we're going into it now. We've got about 25 seconds to go. Who wins Ermit Brereton? I'm still going with Port Adelaide. I've got to stick with my guns too, yeah, Port. We'll have to go to the home team. <laughs> All right. Is the lab there? Boys? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you reckon, Kingy? Mitchell to win the game for him, Ed. Mitchell to win the game, he says. Three seconds to go. Let's go back. It's extra time in the elimination final. This year in the last second. So we go five minutes either way. No break in between. The players just swap ends. They have gone to check the rules. And we reload again. What a finish to this elimination final. Sam Mitchell, all his experience, desperate to keep going on, and the magnificent Adelaide scoreboard. There it is. It is all tied up. Well, it's told some fascinating stories, hasn't it? That old scoreboard does, but this is one of the most intriguing. West Coast have won six of their last nine against Port Adelaide. They've never lost to Port Adelaide here. Here we go. Extra time to decide who plays GWS next Saturday night in Sydney. You're pretty happy at this centre bounce if you're Drew Petrie. You've got uh, Nathan Vardy, sorry. You've got Curtis and Mitchell, two ground low medalists who can win it for you. Poshy knows something about exhilarating TV. It's hard to get much better than this. Extra time to decide who marches on from the first elimination final. Preps out the back. Prittis again. Jet inside 50. Darling, strong hands, got it to Kennedy. He was stripped of it, got it back. Ball's on its way. Well done, Corey. Petrie hard at it. Is he giving away a free kick? I think he has. It might be reversed here. No. No, he was going the His accident going the footy, all right? It's high tackle. I've seen those uh, reverse there. I'm glad the umpire. Time off. So there's a free kick. And then Pittard came in. And they get paid a lot. Drew, Drew put a bit on it, obviously. I'm glad he didn't pay it. Yeah, good up, right? Because that'll stop players maybe putting extra mayonnaise on them. Clearly accidental. Hamish Hartlett is OK. He's on his feet. A little bit groggy. Yeah, he looks worse for wear, Hamish Hartlett. So 
So that's what Jasper Pittard has in front of him. You already see the clock ticking down to just four and a half of the first part of extra time need. Flicked it out to Wines. Paulette, who should just come off the boundary line again. A big pack. Well done. Wingard kept his feet. Now kicks it to touch. Houston charging at it. The other way comes McGovern. So solid in all his play. Good chance out the back. West off. Can he give it to Boat? Tucked up with the boundary line. Centering kicks a good one to Sam Gray. And a golden opportunity for the power to strike first. It's a crucial one-on-one -on -one there just outside 50. McGovern went to the football and Westhoff let him go. He made the decision to stay back. McGovern couldn't take the ball cleanly. And then from that moment on, they always had a player four to the footy with Westhoff and Boak. He's been the number three goal kicker for Port Adelaide. 26 goals coming into tonight. For his second of the evening, Sam Gray. Kick a big goal. Strike first. And Sam Gray delivers. And a big moment for his footy club. Calming influence of the captain. Didn't blaze away. Could easily have been tempted. Spotted Sam Gray. And Gray delivers. So Back. Ken Hinckley's team. Back in front. Not even nine minutes have they led for. West Coast, 107 minutes in the lead. It's Port Adelaide, six points in front. Vardy, Mitchell through his legs. Vardy came again. Jetta off half-back. Well played. Long ball now in the Darling direction. Almost to Mark Howard. Not paid. Ball to Burn Jones. And now the run of Houston. Kick to Wines is great. Really well the Port defence, haven't they, since... The early stages of the first quarter really stood up. Big moments. Gray through his hands. His namesake, Robbie, picked it up. Well tackled by Prittis. He's had more tackles than anyone in VFL, AFL history. They need more of it. Here he comes again. Awkward kick forward. Fisted on cleverly by Cripps. Getting back there, Howard. Wines. Burn Jones has been excellent. Riley Bonner. Sweeping left foot kick. Dixon went early. And over the line. So that was the contact. Bottom right, you can see Hayes Hartlett still being treated on the interchange bench. So did he disappear down the race at any stage? No, still here. Uh, the left eye where he got smacked there in that contest there. Uh, looks like he's just about closed the left eye up, but still with the medical staff now assisting him. Moving around OK, so it looks like he, he could be right to go. There you go, you can see the left eye now there with a bit of a problem. What was the reaction like from the crowd down there on full time with scores level? Oh, Baz, it's a magnificent uh, atmosphere right here now. We thought the Thursday night's game here between the, uh, the Crows and GWS was loud. I reckon this might just have it in terms of uh, the volume here. Jenna Swart started to find a bit of the footy, but again, the young defenders, this is Dougal Howard. Standing up big time for his club. Yeah, and they're under siege early, those young defenders. And they've recovered well. Riley Bonner to West off to Dixon. Well done, Shepard. Open the door for Shuey. What can Dan Mitchell do? Found a bit of space. McGovern. Now we've got a genuine one-on-one. -on -one. Which way will it bounce? Knee gives chase. Gaff keeps his feet. Shins it forward. Burn Jones commits himself. Knee comes back. Wins the ball. Darling had hold of him. Burn Jones again. Oh, cleverly done Knee. Got it to Wines. It was clever. Now Polek got the Wines handball. Running hard. Long ball comes inside 50. Houston pops it. And Dixon marks it. Marks a big chance. power player out there and a chance here to put Port Adelaide two goals in front for his fourth a behind a wobbly kick off the boot a poor follow through and not a great setup that wasn't G. Jake Neaton he's great out on the wing here 
I think never gave in. It was three or four contests in a row. The winner, a date with GWS next Saturday night. Up in Sydney, Petrie's been huge tonight. Hartlett back out there. Chance for Dixon. Now West off, taken without the footy. Picked up by McGovern. Little one from Prittis. McKenzie, Hamble partially smothered to Boak. Wingard's dangerous on all fours. Got it to Gray. Clever handball. Back to Ollie Wines. The young champs done it. Big goal, Wines. Ollie Wines take a bow. 27 disposes, two goals, and a 13 point lead in extra time. He's been huge. Kicked that goal. In the last quarter before extra time from a stoppage. That was a massive goal there. And the Eagles now need to kick three goals. They've only kicked two since quarter time. Port Adelaide with their biggest lead of the night now. 13 points. 24 seconds remaining in the first period of extra time. Another five minutes still to come. Yeah, the kick two goals since halftime, Baz. <laughs> the Eagles, they three to win it. Ryder over Vardy. Jetta bursts off half back, takes the footy, sends it long. West Coast need a fast play. It might get out the back. Kennedy! Kennedy kicks a goal with nine seconds on the clock in period one of extra time. Port players thought they touched that ball. You can hear the umpire there saying they'll be checking it upstairs. If there's anything that they see, they review, they'll let us know. They're reviewing, so they're reviewing it now. So this is an unofficial review. This is the routine check. Goal stands. The goal stands, all right. Seven Island. seconds. You would think there'd be a further Island. score. Picked up by Redden, and on the side of the mark, has been taken. And it's been paid. So can Cripps go back and launch a Jaden Hunt-style talk? He's going to have a go. Got a reasonable piece of it. No further score, so they change ends now, the players. No break. It's a seven-point port lead, and they just swap ends. So a bit of composure required here, and that goal from Kennedy with nine seconds remaining, Richo, just keeps West Coast well and truly alive. It certainly does. It's a crucial goal for them. Players will swap ends straight away. Gee, they must be feeling the pinch. This has been a tough, hard game. Charlie Dixon, what a star he's been. Three goals, five. Had a chance to make it four goals. What about Sam Mitchell, Matthew Prittis, and Drew Petrie? Storied careers. Five minutes remaining in them, perhaps. Or can West Coast get their way in front? And they live to fight another day. Well, in that little period of extra time there, the first period, the Eagles had five clearances to nil. They're going to need to keep doing that to win it. They've got to get first use. So, Port Adelaide by seven points. For one of these teams, only five minutes remaining. Unless, of course, scores are level at the end of the five. Then it would be next score wins. Bonner off half back. He's been suburb. Got better as the game's gone on. Sam Gray. Footy falls into his hands. Plays on quickly. Wingard. No free. Swaps the ball back towards goal. McKenzie. Cool head. Not for the first time. Long to Shuey. Shuey no mark. But plays on quickly. Sweeps the handball towards Chris. He got an unkind bounce. Burn Jones. Powell Pepper. Back to Burn Jones. Now Gray steadies up, Hartlett back out there. McGovern is the man here. He got a hand to it. Well done the course of contest. Opens it for Sam Gray. He's been enormous in extra time. Opportunity to win guard. Can he kick the goal? Misses. Eight-point ball game. Four minutes remaining in extra time. 
And Shannon Hearn, you'd think he'd drive this one right up the middle. 100% he will. Oh, no, he doesn't. Well, they're going to have to kick two goals at Fancy West Coast and not allow Port Adelaide to score one. They just haven't taken the ball inside 50 enough not to be efficient. They're going to need to kick two goals. Lacra, long ball towards the 50. Vardy, Ryder, well done, Vardy. Got a clever fist on it. Used Petrie. Vardy breaks the tackle of Houston. Short to Kennedy. Kennedy's got it. Quiet night by his high standards. But a chance here to kick his second extra time goal. How good was Petrie again in that contest with Ryder? He tapped the ball down into the path. His teammate gave them this chance. So this, to get it back to two points, on its way, and on its way straight. Josh Kennedy stands up when his team most needs it. Three goals for the night. A goal in each half of extra time. Superb work by Vardy. What about this final? That has had a bit of everything. Then the All Australian full forward delivers. And a handful of West Coast fans here can't believe it. Three minutes nine, two point ball game. Mitchell, Shuey, Vardy in there. Ryder Wines, Ray Gray, and Pal Pepper for the power. Huge clearance this one. And the umpires out shock it. To throw that one up, not happy with his work. It's bad luck, not as if anyone's watching. <laughs> so a little anti climax now, but this is a big contest. This one loose player back at either end. Ryder went hard at it, brilliantly done. Down to Gray, no free kick. Ryder emerged with the footy, well played. If he's got speed, bears away. Looks for Dixon. Dixon's done it. Oh, what a great challenge, Dixon. He's been the player of the night for mine, and that is an enormous grab, Richard. He has. He's their best player tonight, 100%. Look at that. Gee, that's a good contest, Mark. McKenzie is all over him. He's had 22 touches, 16 contested possessions. It was a key forward. He's kicked three goals, five. Playing his first ever final, Charlie Dixon. What a night he's had. Can he kick? His team's through to a date with GWS. He's pushing it across. The three goals, six for the night. Charlie Dixon and 2.16 on the clock. Gee, that's the only part of his night that's hurt him. Three goals, six. Might have been it if he kicked that. That blemish keeps those Coast Eagles alive. This time, Hearn right down the middle. Forced forward. Wines. Boak. Blazes away. Long behind. Four points a lead. Probably doesn't make a huge deal of difference. West Coast just must get it to the other end and kick a goal. The last thing that the Eagles can do Mate, is go too slow here. I thought Hearn would go down the middle again, but it worked last time. They got a goal last time he went wide. Gaff got it to Sheed. Sheed, well, it's the right thing to do. Take the risk and McGovern. Quick handball on. Will it sit for Shuey? Boat gives chase. Did really well to skip it, Boat. Hands it to Weaver. Stolen by Redden. Back to Shuey. Can he get past the tackle? Hold the footy. Huge tackles. Advantage paid to Wingard. Minute 30 remaining. What can Wingard do? He's turned it over. Barris has got the footy. So has it come back West Coast way? McGovern, was he off? No call from the umpire. Houston is down. Cripps, one of the free kick, Hartlett, Wingard, 1.12 on the clock, Hartlett drives it long, McGovern, well, he didn't go the mark, he's the best in the league at marking those balls, and he went the fist across the line. As 15 marks for McGovern tonight so far. Well, yeah, he, he hardly ever does that. I think the boundary line got inside his head. He always goes for the mark. Oh, okay. Shuey, Shuey, oh. it's up, Mitch. Oh, he was away too, Shuey. Shuey went pagel. Yeah, not official, the umpire caught it, so he's got to go back. Shuey's for the corridor. Can they get a goal here? Hearn, 
Well done, Moon. Shut him home. Bursts away. Composure to Jetta. Jetta takes on the man of the mark. Sends it forward. Darling's down there. West off the loose. Cleaned up by Petrie. Flat over the opportunity down there for Raymond. Coming through, Bonner. Gets the handball back. Pittard under all sorts of pressure. Well done, Kennedy. 36 seconds remaining. Can they sneak a goal? Sheen bends it around. Cross the face. Will it stay in? Boundary throw in. 27 seconds remaining. That kick down the middle. So that con Westhoff was huge in the contest. That marking contest. Nothing the coaches can do. Fans can't bear to watch. The season down to this. Extra time. Shuey taken high by Pollack. Pay a free kick. Free kick for Luke Shuey. The clock still running. It might be a kick after the siren to sit the West Coast Eagles into the second week of the finals. Still the clock is running. Some big names, Baz, that have done that. Gary Buccanara, Billy Brownless, even Tony Lockett's point after the siren. And now Luke Shuey Soders. Amazing, my unbelievable game of football. Just taste through that moment for you having that shot. I can't remember, it just popped too many head knocks in the celebration. Um, we do a lot of work on our goal kicking and sick in your routine, and nothing can alter your routine in any circumstance. Um, been pretty well, and yeah, this is it is a boyhood dream, of course, to take the boys through to the next stage. Did you have uh, was it nerves when you woke, or you actually felt pretty calm in yourself to have a shot? <laughs> I was nervous, mate. I was nervous, but um, yeah, that's that's as good a game as we've ever played in, in terms of spectacle for the fans. And, um, you don't want to come out on the wrong side of those ones, so play punk to get a win. Obviously, right at the start, they smashed them in contested ball. They got themselves back, but you were able to respond again. The momentum shifts were quite dynamic in that match. Yeah, yeah, they um, they smashed us in contested footy in, in those KPIs when we played in Perth uh, a few months back. And um, we sort of owed them one. They're, they're a bloody good team and one of the good midfields getting around the competition. So, you know, finals footy, you've got to bring that for four quarters and um, got the chocolates. Paddy Ryder was enormous against you guys in the two games during the season. You put some work in him and did a great job. Drew Petrie outstanding. Yeah, Drew is outstanding. And, and Buds, they've, um, they've slogged away for so long this year. And uh, backs against the wall sort of stuff. People keep writing them off. But um, Drew, at 50 years of age, just keeps on keeping on. And as you touched on, Paddy Ryder is a, he's a bloody star. And, um, they were able to nullify him a little bit tonight. But his tap works as good as anyone. So we had our work cut out for us. Along with Drew, there's a couple of other veterans that are going to say goodbye at the end of this season, and you yourself, you've kept the dream alive for them, so big week next week. Yeah, fingers crossed we've got a few more games to go, mate. They, um, yeah, a few of those boys certainly deserve to go a bit deeper in September, and a uh, huge challenge next week against GWS, another great midfield, and um, again, touched us up last time we played them, so can't wait. Congratulations on your composure, mate. Uh, you live the boyhood dream tonight, Luke. Thanks, mate. Well done, Sodas, and congratulations to Luke Shuey. Not just the two goals, not just the goal, 
at the end of extra time, but also 32 disposals. A phenomenal effort. And for those players, so brave, such courage. Both teams fought it out. They really didn't deserve to be a loser tonight. Hard luck for Port Adelaide. And for Matthew Prittis, 33 disposals and a goal. So does the career. Goes on. Unbelievable, isn't it, uh, Matty Prittis? Yeah, we were just saying that it's been just an unbelievable season across the board. And perhaps the most exciting game we've seen all year. Yeah, all well, year, but for my career, it's, it's right up there at number one. So what a moment for Luke Shuey. Um, embraced it and got it done. So we do a lot of work, you know, on our mental side of the game and it really came through tonight for us. Absolutely. Massive composure from him. Uh, if you had to the ball in someone's hands after the siren, would Luke be your option or would you go on with someone else? He's right up there because he, he's got the composure and he's got the skill too. So, uh, mate, what a moment for him. Fantastic. Matty, for you, of course, and the other boys too, uh, Drew and also Sammy Mitchell, their dream stays alive. It's just a fantastic situation for you. Oh, we're just embracing every minute we get. Um, Florence Blue's fantastic. Every game this weekend has just been so contested and hard fought. And that's the sort of footy you want to be a part of. So, yeah, we, we keep going. Midfield tonight is super important, of course, too, because uh, they did have a fair weapon there in Ryder. Yeah, Nate Bartz and uh, Drew Petri, mate, they were fantastic and giving us an honest contest, and they are really predictable. So that's all we ask of them, and you know, it's probably been a weakness for us with the midfield group this year. We haven't got it done consistently, so a good effort tonight. You're still only, what, 32? You're not thinking about going on again with all this excitement, eh? <laughs> Who knows, mate, but well, hopefully we can just last as long as we can. Matty, congratulations tonight. Great win. Thanks, mate.